spice up your life. Good morning, this is Newswire, Dennis Aceto. President William Root has expressed commitment to strengthen relations with China as he attended the Belt and Road Initiative in China. The forum aims to foster international collaboration and economic growth through infrastructure and trade connectivity. He emphasized the need for like-minded nations to work together to address shared challenges and promote global prosperity. In particular, he expressed Kenya's commitment to strengthening its relationship with China under the new Silk Road Initiative. Deputy President Rugadi Gachago has assured the residents of Lolgorian in Kilgoris, Naro County, that the government will step up security following incidences of insecurity in the area. Speaking when he attended an interdenominational church service at Old Motonyi Primary School in Kilgoris, Gachago assured the residents of the facilitation of the security officers through the provision of vehicles to ensure effective delivery and intervention. Gachago said the security of all Kenyans is of paramount importance. This as after local leaders had sought intervention from the national government owing to the increased insecurity in the area. And opposition leader Raila Odinga's hit out at President William Ruto for what he terms as meddling in Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Coalition Party Affairs. Speaking in Siaya County, Odinga accused President Ruto of trying to divide the coalition through unfounded speculations about Wiper Party leader Kalonzo Musyoka's presidential candidacy in the 2027 general election. Odinga spoke to the president's recent remarks that he will only have Mr. Musyoka to run against him come 2027, telling Ruto to stop belittling the Wiper leader. He maintained that Azimio is intact and that the decision on who will be its next flag bearer shall only be made at an appropriate time. And head of public service Felix Koske has urged the Luo and Kalenjin communities to unite and focus on development. Koske, who presided over a funds drive at St. Luke's and Dara Parish ACK in Rarieda constituency, said the two communities must live harmoniously. He said both being Nailoti groups, a acrimonious competition between the two communities was unnecessary. Koske said the brotherhood between the two communities dates centuries back and will not be wiped out by a few elements stalking division. And Koto Secretary General Francis Atwoli has dismissed the demand by LSK that he apologizes for supporting the quack lawyer Brian Mwanda. In a statement, Atwoli has insisted that he will support Mwanda, saying that he will push for recognition of prior learning sh that should be even in the legal sector and should recognize people like Mwanda. Atoli has continued to say that if LSK raises ethical issues about Wanda, then it will first have to highlight several other complaints that have been raised against lawyers. This is LSK has emphasized that Wanda has violated the rules by serving as a lawyer without qualification. Eric Theory is the president of LSK. Brian Mwendwa should not be celebrated as a hero. He is a criminal and as of now he is a fugitive running from the law and we've had a very very uh, extensive discussion with the director of uh, criminal investigations and he has assured me that he has put his best resources to try and trace this fugitive and we hope that uh, their actions will bear fruit so that he can be brought to book. Speaking over the weekend, Theory asked all that were misled by Mwenda that he was a lawyer to go to their offices and be given further directions. We also want to urge members of the public who were hoodwinked by the said Mr. Mwendwa that he is an advocate and they hired him to give them services to present themselves at the Law Society uh, from Monday so that we can be able to first understand how uh, he contracted them. We can give them advice on how they can be able to resolve the legal quagmire that they find themselves in by being represented by a quack and also to assist us with investigations so that we can be able to bring comprehensive charges against Mr. Mwendwa when he is arrested. 
Tideza Kamwende was seen with former Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko promised to present him before the investigation officers and vowed to stand by him in his ordeal. Now, Iran has warned that any Israeli ground offensive in Gaza Strip could expand the scope of the conflict elsewhere in the Middle East. Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdelhain held talks with Qatar's Emir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani as Israeli troops massed on the border with Gaza. This is Newsroom. Dennis Asada. Good morning. Four point four Spice FM, Nairobi. The following takes place from six a.m. to ten a.m. every weekday on Spice FM. Good morning, and I love your show. Thank you. <laughs> Having come from Bakikuyu radio background, I migrated to Spice <laughs> because of the content. I was born in a slum, but somehow. I got a break in life. So sometimes when you see the sweating coming out because of the passion and whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> Behind the noise, there are people. And we share the same umbilical cord. It shouldn't be like that. I am so disappointed. We used to tell Honda uh, Boraila Molotinga that he's doing police of conmanship. And even President Uhuru Kenyatta, Sirikali, he is going to conmanship you. You cannot promise people that you reduce tax and then you double. In politics, mm there is uh, the issue of trust. Mm. For you to turn around and then stab the same people who gave you that trust, there is no other level of dishonesty. Anaimabo, The Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. It's critical that people pay taxes. But then, taxation has to have a limit. When you start overtaxing people beyond certain limit, then this is now we call robbery with violence. We are all struggling, but we don't show. If you're not doing well, shame on you. But you have to say, I'm broke and I'm struggling. <laughs> we are not okay until everybody is okay. okay. We are pretending to have political parties. Why don't we just be honest? And we say, these are the Luyas, these are the Kambas, these are the Kikuyus, and we are find ourselves in Kenya. You know, with, with politics and leadership, no matter what you do, <laughs> there will always be a complaint. <laughs> there will always be the assumption that you're either stealing or you're not doing things right. For as a dear, don't fear. If you know you're doing the right thing, you've thought about it, you've got an expert advice, do it, then understand later. This country, we don't need prayers. Prayers mm. is between you and God. Good governance and thinkers who care about the country and not their stomach. That's what we need. Good morning and welcome to What Is This? This is Monday and we're getting into the third week of October. What does it look like? Well, look, the heavens opened yesterday. And so that means that a little bit of movement will be curtailed here or there. And it looks like as we get into the morning with more of a drizzle that it's going to keep on that way. Um, there's not much happening in terms of traffic this morning and not for now at least. But we're going to see that build up as we get through the morning. A little bit of movement coming into the CBD by way of Muranga Road and uh, also so um, Wangari Mathai, but let's watch out for that and see what happens. Jogo Road is also starting to look pretty busy as you get towards Landis and then out towards the Kamkunji roundabout. Uh, apart from that, I think we should be fine, at least for now. Still slim pickings. Let's see what happens through the rest of the morning. And let's talk on Spice FM KE on X. Keep things moving this Monday. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, 
controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the Situation Room. Good morning. The How only way to start your Welcome day. to Monday, 16th day of October 2023. Another short week. For those that uh, look at weeks in lengths, it's another short one. Uh, it's a week after the weekend that uh, April decided to do like that. But they like eased the pain. You know, but they cushioned you a bit. Oh. Yeah? Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's also a weekend where the rain has started in Nairobi. Mm. Mm. It did. F- it did, eh? Hey. Was it heavy? It was. Quite. Yeah. It was really heavy. I liked it, but hey. Was it prolonged or was it one of these It was bursts? short. It was a burst for about... What time did it rain in your neck of the woods? Uh, at about 10 to 3 for maybe 45 minutes. And then after that, it was a drizzle. 10 to 3? Like... A.M. Before that, it was just lots of warm wind and for mm. maybe a couple of hours, but then the rain just out of nowhere. It's a voo that caused the rain. Is it? Mm. Huh? Mm. That <laughs> ah. Especially when it follows, follows something called condensation. Mm. <laughs> That's it. Okay. It brings rain. Mm. How was your weekend, though, Sindhu? I was all right. Hey. Yeah. At Mimi, I'm going to poor. quite all right. Hey, city and yours? Good. Did you rest? Yeah. Ah, yes. Mm-hmm. That is something I have to do, man. Yes. Otherwise, kita <laughs> kuramba. I saw this clip. Yeah. Wait first. How was your weekend? It was fine. Oh, you said so already. Yes. Okay. I watched this clip of the prison's uh, band playing. I think it was at the Nairobi um, trade fair, mm-hmm. agricultural fair, whatever. Mm. And so that fair, spurred, fair. Yeah, that one. Yeah. And so that spurred me on to watch a few more videos <laughs> of bands. Mm. So I was watching the bands. The world, and then I remember, did I ever tell you guys that I played the French horn? No. French horn? Yeah. I How played, many types of horns are there? There are many That's, types of horns. Well, I know there's a, the one we belong to cows. Mm. That much I get. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to ask, uh-huh. <laughs> what does a French horn look like? I played the French one. Actually, did, let me show you a picture. Of the it's a small one. little thing, which is a, which is as a catrice. So it has many, many, mm. and then it's got a big bell at the end where you put your hand in, mm-hmm. um, and that your hand in the bell, yeah. uh, as well as when you play the three keys and how you you know purse your lips and play. Mm. Now it depends on the sound that um, that you want that you want, or sure. according to the notes. That sound does it blare out. It does blare out, but not like a trumpet. Mm. Um, like a so muffled trans- uh, trumpet band? kind of and it's actually the middle bass it's one of the middle bass wow, instruments yeah. so there it is that's what I used to play mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's one of the middle bass instruments mm-hmm. Yeah. so you have your high which is trumpet and then you have your middle bass which is this and then you have your bass which is like your trombone and tuba okay Yeah. now there are only three places to press yeah, the only three. How does that change the sound? The only three keys, and that's what I was saying. Yeah. Where you put your hand in, so you have your hand in, so you can, if you like this, the sound changes like this, the sound changes. Or if you splay your hand, the sound changes as well. You so splay your hand where? Inside this bell. This bell here. There. That part. I see that picture of the guy. Who there you go. So his hand is in the bell. Uh-huh. You get it? Uh-huh. Yeah. Here's a better picture. The hand is in the bell here. You see? There's a better picture. You're going to let room better, Baba. The hand is where? Yes. You're going to room better. Or the right hand. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. So that's how you now play around with the sound you that play comes around out. With the sound that comes out, and then you change, you change the notes with the three. With the three uh, buttons. Yes. But there's another one which we saw had four. Yes. Yeah, some have four. Some have three. Right. So this is a typical. Round with four is a is a deep bass. Yes, this is a typical alto horn. Okay. The one with four is your bass horn. 
I just thought it was interesting because I saw a guy playing. I was like, hey, I, I used see. to play that when I was younger. I see. So I, I spent lots of my lot of the weekend listening to to Prison's band for that reason. Yeah, and mm. they actually play really well, actually. Mm. Yeah. Well, they're good. So there you go. Okay. Toot your horn. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Toot something. <laughs> Welcome to the situation room, everybody. At a quarter past six, let me tell you what we'll be discussing. So over the weekend, we saw the demolitions that uh, happened in the river. It is land that the court has determined belongs to the East African Portland Cement Company. And there are people who had bought this land from various quarters. There are those that say they bought from land buying companies, there are those that bought from individuals. But anyway, they had developed on this land and houses were demolished. What is the story, the actual story with this land? We'll be talking to two people who are victims in this and their houses were demolished. They'll be joining us at 7 a.m. What are their names? So we will be talking to uh, Bishop Apundo and mm. we'll also be talking with Shadrach mm. um, um, is Mitaya, mm. I've just got confirmed his name. But these, yeah, these are two individuals whose houses came down and also one of the churches uh, came down over the weekend. Mm. Um, so yeah, Bishop Richard Apu Abundo mm. and Shadrach Mutia. Mm. Yeah. So they join us at 7 a.m. and let's just get to hear their side of the story and what has happened to them over the weekend their kind of losses that they've gone through and their neighbors and their friends and their communities. So that's a 7 a.m. conversation. At 8 a.m., World Food Day, we will have a conversation around this. Hamisi Williams is an assistant food and agriculture organization Kenya representative. Uh, that is from the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. He'll be joining us alongside Benjamin Andama, who is the county executive committee member for agriculture, livestock, and fisheries and cooperatives in Kakamega County. So the CCM for all those things, agriculture, livestock, fisheries, cooperatives, add anything else from <laughs> Kakamega, Benjamin Ndama, and the assistant representative for Kenya at FAO. They'll be joining us at 8 a.m. for a food conversation at 8. At 9, there's all this issue about this young man who um, is being sought after by the DCI after the Law Society of Kenya, asked the DCI to please, please, please get this man. He's been impersonating lawyers and claiming that he's an advocate of the High Court. Never been admitted to the bar. Watch that. Never been to the Kenya School of Law. Watch mm -hmm. that. Never been. Never graduated with mm -hmm. a degree in law. Mm -hmm. According to the Law Society of Kenya. So, this whole issue of uh, impersonation and the rise of fake lawyers in Kenya will be joined by two advocates of the High Court. These ones are not fake. Sure. They are on the roll of the Law Society of Kenya. Mm. Peter Wanyama is an advocate of the High Court and Manua Hosea is also an advocate High Court and a founding chairperson of the Young Bar Association. Young Kavirondo Association. Young Bar Association. Uh, Not those ones in the bar, but those ones on, on the bar. On the bar. Yes. Here, Maneno, is like that. 18 minutes after 6. If you're online, let's know where you're tuned in from. Kaiser Obed already says, I am in. Right. Yes. Okay. He doesn't even wait at you. Please, uh, he doesn't wait for the queue. His okay. queue is 6 a.m. He's inside. Where are you tuned in from this morning? Let's hear from you. After Ndu gives us the weather forecast, we will acknowledge your presence. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day. Cloudy conditions in Nairobi with a chance of continued rain currently at 16 degrees, going to highs of 25 and lows of 15. It's cloudy at 14 in Nakuru with highs of 23 and we'll see highs of 24 in a mostly cloudy area at 15. It's partly cloudy at 13 in Eldoret with highs of 24 into Monday. Partly sunny conditions at 25 in Mombasa with highs of 31 and 31 will be the high in a mostly sunny Malindi at 25. It's clear at 20 in Kisumu with highs of 28 and lows of 19. And in a partly cloudy Kakamega at 16, we'll see highs of 27. It's 19 degrees and mostly cloudy in Kampala with highs of 26. And Dar es Salaam is partly sunny at 20.
26, going to highs of 32. Severe thunderstorms in Johannesburg this morning at 11 degrees. We'll see 19 as the high and lows of 9. And it's mostly cloudy at 27 in Lagos with highs of 30 and lows of 25. It's clear at 24 in Kinshasa with highs of 32. And we're looking into a sunny Beijing Monday afternoon at 18 with highs of 22 and lows of 7. Uh, the winter months are checking in. It's 5 degrees in a partly cloudy Paris with highs of 14. And we'll see highs of 13 in a partly cloudy London currently at 4. It's 10 degrees and clear in New York Sunday night coming into Monday. Highs of 16 and lows of 8. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM. Online. Ricardo Miliera, Mariera, sorry, Mm -hmm. is tuned in and he says, Greetings, kings and queens. Kitengela Ikolot, okay. telling you. Mm-hmm. Don Sabwa, Matsuka Bwanji, the great three, CT, Eric and Ndu, keeping them honest. Don the, Sabwa comes up with new words every day. This one has been around, Matsuka. What does it mean? Hello. Greetings. Ah. Yeah. And the response to the Matsuka is what? CT, what had we said? Something to do with Bwanji or something. Yeah, Bwana, something like that. Matsuka Bwanji. Yeah, then now you say Buanji Muno. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you 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 that was got it. <laughs> or Buanji Sana. <laughs> Buanjuka too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, those ones. Uh-huh. <laughs> Alex Omogi says, uh, greetings from Doha Katase. Hi to Ndu. Me now me. Hi Ndu. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. Mm-hmm. Alex says hi to you. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. He says we love the voice. Miss Keyo, mm. Alex, and we have greeted each other. Mm-hmm. Christopher Ochiengi. Hey, I've never heard that. Can you say, can you put an I, like Ochieng, Ochieng, then you put an I after? Or is it just like... You could. You could if you want. You could. Doesn't mean anything or change mm. anything. All right. So this one is Christopher Ochiengi. Ochiengi. And that's his name. Okay. All right. Eh? Our, good morning. James Sekento is introducing himself and he says, James Sekento is tuning in from Kerara Pond and says, good morning, let's pray for the Gaza Strip sooner rather than later. Hmm. Mm. Good morning, wonderful people. Great week ahead. Thank you, Zeke. Indeed, it must be. In fact, I decree and declare this week will be a good one. Okay. Very good. Joe Mungai says, good morning from Bonnie Lake. Jamboni, CT, Ndu, Latif, and Edna. The Edna for this week is Mumbi. Aha. So, Mumbi's here. It is Mumbi. Mumbi Biscuit is here with us this week. Mm-hmm. Um, greetings from warm Phuket. Proverb of the week. Suits and beards may win the case if you are a Brian. <laughs> good one mm-hmm. Agri- yeah okay so we said hello um bottom up ni really see mafuta imetoka bottom eco up <laughs> that's what they meant mm-hmm. in case you were not uh, sure mm-hmm. desmond oti says good morning eric ct and princess Ndu. thank you very much people are getting this title right tune in from the lakeside of nyanza hamjambo ct nduna eric sikunjema asante sana asante Musketeers, it's my hope you guys had a good weekend. Well, you know, we tried and here we are. Now, Emmanuel is tuned all the way from New Delhi and says, Mesh, Eric, Mesh mm-hmm. Mua, please arrange for an interview with your friend, His Excellency, the President, and make sure hustlers are the interviewers. So. So what is my role? You arrange are arrangement. You are the arrangement. Organizing secretary. You're the organizing mm-hmm. secretary. Safi. Please, eh? Very good. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Joe Lodondi is listening from Kansas in the US. Mm. And that's, Mombasa. That's my relative, by the way. Who? Who? Joel Odondi. Oh, I'm a Kansas. Odondi. Yes. Okay. Personal relative. Personal cousin. Uh, yes. Of yours. Personal. Of your mm. own. <laughs> <Yes>. Self. <laughs> Even I have relatives who listen. I'm mm. telling you. Yes. Joe Odondi, we are greeting you. And he's abroad. And he's, he's, he's overseas. He's overseas. He's, he's, he's in abroad. He's overseas. <laughs> yani, you climbed plane and crossed the sea. You have to recognize. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> Robert Boga tuning from Mombasa and Ronald is tuning in from Athi River. Frederick, whose name is Njagi Njeru, mm. is tuned in from Seattle <laughs> in mm-hmm. Washington. Kobo, by the way, Kobo in Nigeria is like, you know, you have shillings and cents. Mm. In Nigeria, you have Naira and Kobo. Kobo is sense. So Kobo ni Sobo is your, is ma penny. Your, yes. Pennies, penny and dururu. Those ones. So dururu is a 50 cent. Penny oh, okay. is a 10 cent. Oh, okay. So which, what is Kobo? 
50 all, or 10? All of them put as long together. As, as long as it's a coin. Okay. Uh, sense something. No, actually not the coin, mm. but the sense. They're right? called mangotore. What? Mm. <laughs> the pennies. Mm. Mm. Uh-huh. So Kobo is tuning from Fangano Island. Remember where we are going? To Mfangano Island? Yes. Yes, yes. City, City is organizing yes. this whole thing. You're organizing? That mm. one. Done. Quish. Yes. Mm. Look at my hand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got it. Lillian Atieno says, good morning. Spent a weekend where Kenya Power decided that I should be in darkness. Oh, my goodness. Paul Esana. Paul Esana. I hope the lights are back on because mm. we're here. Mm. So is everybody else. My, fr- my voice is trying to do a thing. Good Kariburi, morning, everybody. Kariburi everybody. Sana. City? Yes, please. Where to this week? Rwanda. 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 Oh. Rwanda. Okay. Rwanda. The Republic of Rwanda. All righty. You know, mm. one of the things about Rwanda mm. that many people do not know, it's one of the most densely populated countries on the planet. Really? Yes, 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 yes. How come? Well, it's, it's small mm. and there are many people. So it's What's only, the population? The po- I'm not really sure, you know. The, <laughs> let, let me tell you why I'm not sure. Mm. Because the figures I was looking at mm. were 2021 figures. Mm-hmm. So, let me look was at... Was this official look. census figures? And those no, they are Google, on, they are Google those figures. Those that you find on... Uh, they are Google figures. On Wikipedia that are quoting CIA. The, the, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so, so I'm, not, I'm not going to go there. Okay. But on this continent, it's the most densely populated country. Okay. Yes. Now, you want to understand that there are others. Mm. On the planet, I think it's around sixth. Mm. Macau is number one. Macau. Uh, not Macau, that the from from from, from Mvoko <laughs> and Macau. Macau. <laughs> not Macau, <laughs> but Macau. Macau, I'm a poor country. No, no, no. Okay. Followed by Monaco. Followed by Singapore. Then Hong Kong. Then Gibraltar. It's interesting that the majority of those are in the South Pacific and the islands. Yes. Now you see this. What makes they're just city states? Yes, they are city states. What makes Rwanda unique is that. It's mainland. It's not an island. It's not Seychelles. It's right here on the continent. All right. All right. Now, the proverbs are really very interesting. Mm. Let me start with one which I think should herald Monday. Mm. Okay? If you call a piece of wood a child, you can never use it to light fire since it has become so precious. (laughs) If you call a piece of wood a child, you can never use it to light fire. Yes. Becomes precious. Yes. Ah. Uh, the complete opposite would be something like give a dog a bad name. That's uh, something, you know. Uh, mm. Interesting. Okay. Let's look at the headlines. On the front page of the standard this morning, trouble <laughs> in paradise. Mm. It's not a question, it's a statement. Mm. When start, what started as a tiff on who sits where between Prime CS Mudavadi and Public Service CS Moses Kuria has opened the lid on power plays in the Kenya Kwanzaa government with subtle threats being issued by senior government officials. Okay, play nice, boys. Ryla prays for Kalonzo raises eyebrows, but why? Mm-hmm. Official Gaza conditions a total disaster. There's a lot of mess going on there. Mm. And there's on the front page, Ruto pitches tent in China. President William Ruto arrives in Beijing, China yesterday to participate in the third Belt and Road Forum for International Cooperation meeting. That's happening this week. Slumlord millionaires making a kill from the poor. Brewers in Nairobi sprawling slums are sending their customers to an early grave by mixing, get this, Mm. industrial chemicals to the drinks that they are manufacturing illegally. What? I'm telling you, chemical. chemical. It's a story that's carried through page two and three on the national pages. It's a big one. The pictures are actually, sheesh. The the conditions, and then people are ingesting this stuff. Mm. It's not a wonder that folks are getting sick and dying, in fact. On the front page of The Nation, Ryla endorses, this is now the story. On the the standard, we see it that... uh, Eyebrows are raised because Ryla praises Kalonzo. Mm. The nation chooses to say that Ryla has endorsed Kalonzo to face Ruto in 2027 State House contest. Inside the big junior high mess. Uh, it's still a mess. It mm. was a mess last month. It was a mess three months ago. A nation investigation reveals the sorry state of junior high schools located in public primary schools. Remember, we're talking about the 
domiciling of junior high in primary. Yep. Now, there is little or no learning going on with the few teachers stretched to the limit and covering all the subject areas by themselves, thus affecting learning quality. Okay, I've got to As give you, please, a little bit of information. Eh. You look at the primary system. Mm. When you start at PP1, PP2, the way it has now been done, because mm. you have pre-primary, first year, pre-primary, second year. Uh-huh. Yes. And then you have grade one, two, three, which is lower primary. Right. All the subjects in these classes are taught by one, one teacher, teacher. Yeah. and you have an assistant teacher, but she or he will cover all subject matter. Yes. Now, from grade four, five, six, when you get to upper primary is mm. when you introduce subject, subject teachers. teachers. Uh-huh. Now, when, of course, you go beyond primaries, uh, now when you go to now um, junior school, junior school, six, seven, and eight, you still carry on the same, whereby you have a class teacher, but then you have subject teachers. Mm-hmm. Now, a class teacher, usually maximum, will take two subjects. Mm-hmm. In as, in, as well as coordinating the class. Mm-hmm. But every other subject goes to a different teacher. And already the burden for many teachers is heavy. Mm-hmm. Now you can imagine a situation whereby you have that going on. Now you have brought what was supposed to be high school into primary, primary school. Mm. Primary. Okay? Mm. And what has happened is that these teachers are teaching all these subjects. Maths. English. Kiswahili. Which teachers? The, the, the class teacher. Yes. This is now. So one teacher now, it's like they've gone back to grade one, two, three. Exactly. Social studies, uh, SST, CRE, mathematics, Kiswahili, uh, English. What are we doing to these children? Uh, what are we doing? Anyway, let's talk about We'll look teacher. at that story in detail, but mm. just to set the pace for that. Pain and agony as homes on Portland land brought down. Yes, we saw this over the weekend. The demolition of palatial homes, churches and schools entered its third day despite a plea by Ukambani leaders to President Ruto to order a halt to the inhumane demolitions. Uh, there is fresh trouble for Kawira's elders back impeachment. The political woes facing Meru Governor Kawira Mwangaza seems to have intensified after... If I say this wrong, you'll forgive me. The Njuri Ncheke Council of Elders endorsed plans by MCAs to remove her from office. Mm-hmm. Mudavadi takes on Koske over roles and offices. Prime Cabinet Secretary and Foreign Affairs as Foreign and Diaspora Affairs Cabinet Secretary Musale Mudavadi has accused Chief of Staff and Head of Public Service Felix Koske of overstepping his mandate, escalating an ongoing tussle with PS. Um, Public Service CS, Moses Kuria, over the roles and locations of their offices. Hey. So, this week looks like it's going to watch Chemka. Okay. That's good. Mm. Business Daily. There's the low-cost homes story, right? Now, Ruto's low-cost homes price and payment plan revealed. Kenyans will pay between 840,000 shillings to 5.76 million shillings for low-cost homes under President Ruto's housing program, which targets putting up 250,000 units every year. There's a confidential document that the Business Daily has seen. It's a government document that is breaking down how this will happen. So basically, it has three categories of houses, social housing, affordable housing, and market houses. Social houses have one, two, three rooms um, from 20 square meters to 40 square meters. The cheapest in the social housing will be 840,000 shillings and the monthly payments will be 3,200 shillings for one room. Uh, Affordable housing will have a studio, two bedroom, three bedroom. The smallest is a studio, it's a 20 square uh, meter house. It will cost 960,000. And the monthly payments will be 5,200. The three bedroom, a 60 square meter house will cost 2.88 million shillings. Monthly payments of 15,600. And then those ones now that are being sold at market rate. There'll be a two bedroom and a three bedroom. A three bedroom is a big one. It's an 80 square meter house at 5.76 million shillings. Monthly repayment for 21,800. That is the story in the business daily. And now workers earning more than 150,000 shillings a month are eligible for houses. And uh, they are affordable houses. They are affordable. Okay. Mm. To whom exactly? To everybody else. In a a three-bedroom house, a three-room house in a social housing category will be 6,400 a month. 
again let me ask a question again mm. affordable mm. to whom mm. you see the the six even if you earn this 100,000 that we are speaking of 150,000 shillings mm. with the cost of living as it is mm. what when you, by the time you've done your juggling and balancing and what have you mm. how much do you really have left or let's start with even just deducting that 6000 that you speak of mm. but we'll discuss it later we can we? discuss it later we can discuss it from the point of how much are you currently paying for rent mm. yes let's right. start there yeah how much would you say 150000 if you're earning 150000 a month yes okay. uh, you will the men's 150 mm. so i'm saying okay let's start with 150000 shillings mm. because if it's difficult for someone who earns 150000 mm. anybody who earns below that it will of course definitely be equally if not more difficult mm. and my company question to you is the person who's earning 150000 on average how much are they paying for rent mm. that is the excellent Can premise you give us those numbers I'll, i'll share that with mm. you in a minute how much are they paying for yeah. rent mm. because then we are looking at saying rent to own yes if you rent a similar house a three bedroom house and you're paying for 21800 is it cheaper from your current status or mm. is it not mm. higher twendele Weak shilling hands CBK 131 billion shillings unrealized forex gain. You know, as the shilling is doing its thing and the dollar is just appreciating on a daily basis, eh? those who have dollars in their accounts are just smiling. Ati nalo ngapi? Jana dollar yangu ilikuwa 100, leo iko 160. Tuendelee. The CBK has dollars in its accounts. So as the dollar is doing its thing, the CBK is sitting behind saying, nice. <laughs> So the dollars that we had earlier were worth 3 billion now they are worth 4 billion. Okay, yeah, not bad. Yeah, so we have the plan. Not a bad day at the yeah. races. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh ticker headlines. First quarter revenue growth slowest in 5 years. Smartphones top care list of items for Eldred Airport sale. Smartphones and feature phones dominate the list of items set to be auctioned by KRA from the Eldred International Airport and Equity Bank has been allowed to auction Wida Highway Motel. You know where Wida is? I've seen it. I can see it. It's Rumuru. A, it's a Wida. Yeah. yeah. Rumuru. It, yes, I've seen it. It's next to Sigona Golf yeah. Club on the highway. Uh-huh. They've got the note to auction the Wida Highway Motel up to the high court dismissed an application to stop the forced sale. It's a very very old hotel. Yeah, it's been there for many years. Uh-huh. Hi, city. Mm-hmm. Tell us quickly top, quickly. Top right hand corner. Mm. In till green. Mm. Recollections as in remembering the past mm. raila beat kibaki hands down mm. in 2007 ex election official reveals mm. the story is on page 4 and 5 f- f- mm-hmm. then cop shoots habi 12 times in bloody love triangle that's okay lady cop What? husband shot 12 times family says They have been threatening to kill each other on this particular day the husband apparently threatened her with a knife and her, she threatened him with a gun mm. uh, and was, made good on her threat yes she, it was a bit fatal and uh, the guy has now become an ancestor mm. senators probe 1.2 billion legal fees in machakos I and mean, this one is nice you know when i first read it 1 million ati senators probe 1.2 billion legal fees in machakos wow Former and current officials the Machakos County government face a probe of a possible collusion to the accumulation of 1.2 billion over legal fees by the devolved unit. Mm-hmm. This one will be an interesting story. Okay? Mm-hmm. Then bang in the middle, bang 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 in the middle, headline, the black bold, cartels make a killing from pending bills. They most certainly do. Mm-hmm. Connected individuals seek hefty bribes to facilitate payments to desperate suppliers. Mm-hmm. Right, right, right. More pain agony as Athi River demolitions enter day three. Pictures of beautiful structures put up with people these, are, these things represent people's life savings their mm-hmm. lives mm-hmm. now it's rubble you find a like house has been demolished here the furniture is strewn all over the place there's a car next door <sighs> anyway we'll be talking about that ah yeah just so. do the traffic mm. so mm. okay it is that time again Tell us about the roads 22 minutes to 7. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day. 
On the Ficker Superhighway, coming into the CBD is where we're seeing it heavy. It's bumper to bumper, just over the drift, and then heading out towards Wangari Mathai. On Kambu Road, traffic has also begun, and it looks like it's going to be a busy one. Let's look at what's coming off of Kangunda Road. It's snaking along into the city. It's going to touch on Altering at some point. And we're also seeing Manyanja Road busy. At some point, it'll touch on Altering and cross over to Jogo Road. It's pretty busy coming in from Mbakasi. At that junction of Altering, going out all the way through, it eventually comes up to the Ficker Super Highway, and so that looks like it's going to be a busy point this morning as well. Uhuru Highway, busy, 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 all the way through uh, from Mombasa Road out towards the CBD and then going out towards Westlands. Let's take a look at what's happening then in Westlands itself. Um, and coming out from Waiaki Way, some traffic there. James Gishiro also proving to be quite busy. This morning, So it looks like Monday morning might just be one for the books. If you've not left, now might be a good time to do so. But let's see what it all pans out to be. And you want to help us out, folks, be your eyes. Let us know what's happening and we can warn folks in advance. Talk to us on Spice FM, KE on X. One hundred two point five Spice FM, Kisumu. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. 94.4 Spice FM, Nairobi. Um, Challenges facing junior schools on January 8th rollout. Mm -hmm. Okay, so remember what we said. Uh, Not what we said. What is the case? Is that these KCP exams that will be sat the 30th, 31st, 30th, 31st and 1st of November will herald the end of the 844 system, essentially. Right? Mm. And this exam then will be the last one. But the question is, what is going to happen in a year that has been riddled by non-teaching, non-realization um, um, of really the first year of junior secondary school in mm. the country? Mm. What is actually going to happen come January 2024? Until September, one who's been named as a teacher has been the only teacher in junior school at a uh, learning institution in Kajiado Central Sub County, where more, when one more teacher was posted there, mm. from February he said when he reported, he's been handling thirteen learning areas. Whereas at university, I almost only trained to teach history and right. Christian religious education. I was not trained for learning areas like integrated science, which comprises of physics, chemistry, and biology. But mind you, the man has been teaching this since February, alone, this year. Okay. I did not do physics in high school, so I have to research online and use YouTube. Teaching the subjects because becomes harder for both the teacher and the learners because there are practical aspects. And at first, we didn't have equipment, he said. Because of the many subjects and little rest, I had to make the classroom my office. Mm. Apart from fatigue, the learners might also get bored for seeing only one teacher in their class. Remember, next lesson, the science teacher will be coming. It is me. Next lesson, it is mathematics. It is who? It is me. me. Ah, now, in January 2024, it will be back to the drawing board as the two teachers will have two classes to teach. This is grade 6, 7 and grade 8 because the first CBC uh, junior high was grade 7. Mm. They're now going to grade 8. eight. Now grade six is going to seven. grade seven. Now these two teachers who've been teaching all the subjects we'll now, now have will two have classes. two classes to teach. They are also unsure whether their contracts will be renewed. <laughs> their case mirrors that of thousands of other teachers employed this year by the government and deployed to teach in junior secondary. <laughs> secondary school teacher trainees specialize in two subjects in university, which they're mandated to do. In all the schools that this particular report visited, there were no teachers qualified to teach pre-technical skills, one of the core subjects of junior school. Whereas the government initially deployed 36,000 teachers on one-year contracts, there are 19,038 public schools licensed to offer junior school. Later in September, an additional 20,000 were deployed. According to the TSC, the Teacher Service Commission, about 7,500 teachers were initially in primary schools but hold bachelor's degrees and were employed to teach in junior school. But the numbers are still not enough.
TSC CEO Nancy Masharia last week said the teachers were to be retooled between October 6th and 13th. That passed, in case you're looking at your calendar uh. and wondering what happened. Another 75,250 teachers, including head teachers and those deployed from primary to junior school, are among staff uh, retooled by the TSC this year. Mm. Now, their complaint is that this all serves no purpose at all. Some experts have raised concerns over the quality of education learners in public schools are receiving and whether it would meet the objectives as set out by the basic education curriculum framework on which CBC is anchored. The Vice-Chancellor of Daystar University, Professor Laban Ayiro, who has done extensive research on implementation of CBC in Kenya, highlights errors that pre preceded the rollout of junior school. He says, you cannot pilot something on an entire population. Scientifically, that's not the way to reform an education system. But that's exactly what we've done. We were supposed to have piloted on a very small scale to see how this is working. Then when you're satisfied, you can then do a rollout to the system. The biggest mistake is that we should have undertaken teacher preparation first, get the required numbers. We should have taken some of our teacher training colleges into middle colleges to train teachers in the various pathways. It's all about planning. Kenya is not in short supply of teachers. We only needed to reskill and retool them. All that has been presented even to that presidential <laughs> working party thing, 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 thing. <laughs> yes. The report was taken to the president. It's yeah. being implemented as we speak. No. Oh. <laughs> the Speaker of the National Assembly, Moses mm. Watangula, mm. said, excuse me. Cannot implement. Thank you, please. You did not bring it to us to discuss. So he has told Kimani Shogwa, excuse me, sir, you go and find out what these people are up to. They are implementing so it. Come and give us a report. We Papa are... Waroma is saying what he has said. <laughs> The report is being implemented. Why am I saying it's being implemented? Because nothing has changed. No, not really. It was moved. To, it was. We now call it junior school. Yeah. Okay. Uh, those things that we are supposed to be doing. JSS is running. Teachers were hired. There are more that will you will have to be hired to yeah. do something, something, something. The whole thing here is, even as Papa Roma is talking about bring these people here. He has an education committee that has spent the last one year, instead of looking at JSS, it was looking at exam cheating. I'm telling you. And then for them to come and, and tell us come that actually nothing us, oh, really happened. There was some cheating here and there. But okay. But JSS has not been a focus of this education committee of the National Assembly. Capitation and the delayed disbursement of funds to school has not been a focus of this education committee of the National Assembly. Pure nonsense on steroids. I told you guys what will happen. That that small money that they released just a few weeks after the start of third term mm. was going to be the last money that any school was yeah. going to see in 2023. We talked about what, and we can easily say that grade sevens in the public school system in Kenya, mm. one year has been flushed down the toilet. Mm. In terms of learning to the to, to capacity, to potential, in terms of what was supposed to happen. It has not happened. Nothing at all. Nothing has happened. You can window dress it. You can dress it up. They say you can put lipstick on a pig. But it's still a what? Pig. It's still a pig, man. And this is what we're talking about. Mm. Now, on top of all of that, what do we want to do? We want to go for Christmas, come back, and then we want to add another class in this mess. And we're not having a conversation about it. No. We're just saying exams. Like, the key really? thing seems to be mm. talk about everything else except the thing that you actually need to talk about. Yep. And talk about doing everything else except doing the thing that you know you need to do. Yep. So we have, you don't do said this thing and for probably the, the length of time that we've been in the studio, mm. do keep saying it. For heaven's sake, stop misunderstanding the people in power. They are telling you with great clarity what they think of you. Yeah. Please observe. When they talk about children and what they... They are doing what they watch, see. Mm. They are telling you. Stop assuming and stop telling them. And stop talking about things which you think they, they want to do or they ought to do. Mm. Look at what they are doing. What does it mean to have an entire year in a child's life lost? My goodness. 
<sighs> it's a lot. It's a lot. And once again, that whole thing by the Speaker of the National Assembly, it's, has, have university students been told, no, you can come in, you don't have to pay school fees? So you're talking no. about because we are not implementing. Half of them have said that they want to go to what? They want to go to private university. Mm. Others have said they are rejecting this fund implementation by the presidential working party, mm. that it doesn't make sense for them, so they're not even doing again. Mm. This vulnerable, not vulnerable, needy, most needy, they still do not know how they are going to categorize it. Yep. So here we are just looking at ourselves. Yep. Meanwhile, schools opened when? As long as you haven't had anything like that, yeah. like university admission has moved back into what was there before. You come in and you apply to help and then help will pay for you. As long as you haven't had that, it's being implemented, my friend. These are stories from here to high heaven. Power play in root of government one week after cabinet changes. Mm. So ministers were given this and the other. <coughs> prime cabinet secretary Musali Mudavad is now prime cabinet secretary and the minister for foreign affairs and diaspora affairs. Uh, Moses Kuria is now cabinet secretary in charge of what? Something, something. Pub public. public service and uh, and performance and public service. something, one thing or the other. <laughs> yes. Now, <laughs> so you see now this public service performance thing, thing, thing is a combination of two things. Uh -huh. One, there was a ministry of public service, gender and whatever which was uh, the former MP for Malindi, what's her name? Aisha Jumbo, Aisha Jumbo. the cabinet secretary. Yeah. Then there was Anda Musale Mudavadi, prime cabinet secretary. There was performance, which was Anda Musale Muda? Vadi. Mudavadi. Mudavadi was in which office? Was at railways. Mm. Aisha Jumbo is at Aisha Jumbo's place. <laughs> Moses Kuria was in two, two rivers. rivers. Now, uh, Moses Kuria now has handed over two rivers. Yeah. He's not going to Aisha Jumbo's office because Aisha Jumbo is she's she's still minister office. for gender. Yes. Ah, yeah. He's not going to Musali as because Musali is his prime cabinet secretary and all these things. Now, where does Moses Kuria go? So Moses Kuria now, working from home, asks, so where am I going to work? <laughs> <laughs> Felix Kosge, head of civil service, writes a notification. We refer to the above subject matter and to the not notification of the president on October 4th in accordance with the presidential action on the organization of the government of Kenya. We hereby notify that the physical address for ministries and state departments have been designated as follows. Uh, Moses Kuria is to take over Kenya Railways headquarters along Haley Selassie Avenue. That is whose office? Musari Mutavati. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mutavati's office would have public service performance and management, state corporations, blah, blah, blah. Kosgei's letter noted Kuria's ministry had been added some responsibilities to include the Ministry of Public Service, Performance and Delivery Management, but Musale says there is no way he's moving from railways. Let me just Why? understand. Why? He can't go to Mofa? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Me, I don't understand. Uh. Forgive me. <laughs> okay. Forgive me. It's railways. I know where the railway station is. Mm -hmm. Which office is it? This is the railway headquarters. Yes. Railway station. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's a big, a big old building. building. That so old, that, yes. 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 It's railway headquarters. Yes. yes. He's taken up a floor. Mm, inside there. Okay. That's the, was the office of the Prime Cabinet Secretary. Okay. So when we had a Prime Minister, what happened to those offices? Prime Minister. Prime Minister's office, we bought a whole office mm. formerly called Ajib House. Mm. Mm, I remember that. It was now called the Office of the Prime Minister. Yes. Now it's called Harambe House Annex. Annex. That is Rigiji's, Rigiji's office. office. And there's Ruto's no way office was also there. Yeah. See, that was the deputy. That is the deputy, deputy president's office, office now. Okay. All right. Okay. No, no. I've I still don't understand. And, and on that same road, uh. the Minister of Foreign Affairs was just after ages. Alfred house. Mutua Why can't was go to at the Mofa? Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Yeah. Yes. Now Alfred Mutua has been moved from there. He's gone to that building near uh, Grand Regency. Yeah. Utali place. Yes, 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 yes. As yes, the minister yes, for yes, yes, yes. Utali. Utali house, it's called. Yes. Yes. So why can't Musaraya go to Mofa? Ah, it's a small office, but I see I'm also prime cabinet secretary. <laughs> so, so that office has nobody. Uh, which one that? Give Moses Kuria, what I'm thinking of <laughs> <all day. laughs> Surely. What are we doing? <laughs> this office is a huge, by the way. <laughs> They're not small offices, these ones. Can you imagine the things we are complaining about? Meanwhile, children did not go to school. Other people slept outside. Now people are doing power play, saying whose is bigger because you don't you, want to... Not only you didn't come to us to tell us these things, so it's not working. I what mean, surely. Okay. Can you imagine those are the things now we are arguing? Saying, oh, my office is, must be bigger than your own. 
You know, they, this this weekend, I was discussing a certain concept with friends of mine. Mm. And uh, it was a concept of a curse. And they said, but uh, sometimes there's a friend who, there's one particular friend of mine who, and you know, by the way, when we refer to my friends, most of them are are chronologically ancient like myself. Mm. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, the fellow said that him, he feels sometimes he's cursed. And said, explaining, explaining, <laughs> explaining why he thought he was cursed. And I point out to him that you do know that when you make a decision, you set things in motion. Mm. And the, the curse you're referring to is just the consequences of a decision your own actions. which you made. Yeah, but that's where the curse comes in. <laughs> it's that thing that makes him make that wrong decision in the first place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That thing that makes us make wrong decisions usually. That's the curse. It's, pl- it's cleverness on our part. Someone <laughs> thinks they're actually making a clever decision. Mm. Or they say they think they're saying something clever. Mm. But they've set something in motion. Mm. We are going, you know, <laughs> we are going to be studying this particular administration and the previous one, mm. okay? Of what it means to a country that had started off on a delightful trajectory of upward mobility. And what happens when it is ruled by gangs mm. okay mm. one gang after another because you sometimes marvel if these are the leaders and their decision then who are the criminals yeah yeah <laughs> these people were in jail who what did they do what did they do because it has to be far worse than what you're seeing mm. you condemn an entire generation literally where do we put you what should you, if if what we charge you before a court what of law? What we charge you with? What do we charge you with? Genocide. Yeah? We charge you with crimes against humanity. What do we charge you with? Murder. What? And they are going about their lives willy nilly, normally, w- w- wondering about whose house they are going to demolish. I don't yeah. understand. Do you, can you imagine that that's the conversation that we are having mm. right now? It's really whose office can? Which I do. I'm not giving up my office. In fact, I'm not moving. At now, now. At I mean, for heaven's sake! Crying out loud. You know, me as Prime Cabinet Secretary, I had some offices, for example, coordination and supervision of government ministries and state departments, overseeing implementation of national government policies, programs and projects. Those ones I'm not letting go. So that is the role of Prime Cabinet Secretary, okay? Moses Kuria is like, now me, as the Cabinet Secretary for delivery and all these other things, those are the things that... I'm supposed to be doing. (laughs) No, 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 what is this? (laughs) El Nino is here. Have you heard... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> have you heard I of the g- plans mm. Serikaliku has made to battle with the- ha, have you heard yeah, no. has there been a movement to try and get citizens to understand what they need to do in this period because El Nino is here mm. and it's going to wreak some serious havoc <sighs> we're being played left right and center we're just being disregarded it's about how much power do I have how much power can I exert? Yeah. The suffering of the people is something we may comment about from time to time. Yeah. But that's just about it. And the children. Oh, no. A no. million children are reporting to school every day and they are only being taught by 30,000 teachers. Yep. And these teachers are doing the best they can, mm. but that best that they can is <laughs> actually minuscule. Nonsense. City, tell us a story before we. Uh, I'm Tumets. just looking at uh, uh, the standard. Mm. Sorry, it's called the East African. Sorry, not standard. East mm. African. <laughs> <laughs> East uh, African. Uh, 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 while all these things are happening, the uh, East African is saying uh, that this Gaza crisis is having a toll on the continent's what? The continent's economies. The continent faces a fresh round of import disruption, <laughs> terror attacks, and tough loyalty tests by US and Israel. Okay? It also says. East Africa is alarmed. You know that matter of uh, DRC, we thought troops in, troops out, peace, peace, peace. Yeah. Peace forget. Mm. East Africa alarmed by clashes in DR Congo's troubled east. And remember, they have an election around the corner. So, my friend, it's trouble everywhere. Oi. Pass. Oi. It's a sad one. Hmm? It's it's a very very sad, it's tragic, and, and it's sad mm. and it's unfortunate because lives will be lost, mm. more lives will we be lost, lost, children yeah. will be displaced. You know, you look at everything that's going on. Mm. It's just losses after losses after losses after losses after losses. And why? Because some people have decided them. It's in their interest not to get along. Mm. It's in their interest not to understand simple things and to place priorities correctly. Mm. So people die. 
And as it comes to the top of the hour, let me tell you, some 6,290 hectares of forests were lost in one year. Kenya lost that uh, much forest in 2022, according to data from the Global Forest Watch. According to the reforestation alerts from the Global Forest Watch, uh, 486,000 alerts were reported in Kenya. The latest deforestation alerts in September and October uh, this year were reported across Narok, Nakuru, Kericho, Elgeyo, Maraquet, and Nyamira counties. So as you're doing all these things, eh? And you're talking about going green and we are leading the conversation globally about climate change and climate action we are losing six thousand hectares of forest in a year and yes. during that year there's a, there was a ban in place against logging during the year now can you imagine this time with the ban lifted kitaramba <laughs> 7 a.m good morning Spice up your life. Good morning. This is Newsroom Dennis Aseto. President William Bruto has expressed commitment to strengthen relations with China as he attends the Belt and Road Initiative in China. The forum aims to foster international collaboration and economic growth through infrastructure and trade connectivity. He emphasized the need for like-minded nations to work together to address shared challenges and promote global prosperity. In particular, he expressed Kenya's commitment to strengthening its relationship with China under the new Silk Road Initiative. And Prime Cabinet Secretary and Cabinet Secretary for Foreign and Diaspora Affairs, Musali Mudavadi, has said that countries must commit to working together to confront the sprouting insecurities witnessed in different parts of the world. Speaking during the media leaders' meeting in Nairobi, Mudavadi said there is a need for innovative solutions for a more peaceful world, given the constantly mutating security threats, including conventional wars in Europe and the Middle East, and protracted conflict and instability in Africa founded by a resurgence of unconstitutional government changes. He said the complexity and magnitude of security concerns have multiplied and broadened globally, which calls for the need to cooperate and work together in an honest and open manner. Some Kenya Council leaders have denied reports that there will be an audit of the results of the 2022 general election. Speaking in Embu County, the leaders have emphasized that the issue had already been resolved at the courts. According to Kiaru Member of Parliament Nini Nyoro, opposition leaders should now deal with the issues that concern Kenyans. I want to make it very clear to Kenyans. There is actually no audit of last year's election. The people of Kenya are already done with the elections. The only time they are raised is for work. Nabia niwaeleze wale. Munituapia munaitisa mazukumuzo ati muoge maneno ya cost of living. Bia tunaona sasa kube wale wa upinzani wanapotezea sisi wakati kwa sababu katika ile sijasikia hata mmoja katika hiyo mazukumuzo anasema cost of living. Maneno ni viti. Mbere North Member of Parliament Geoffrey Ruku supported Nyoro calling upon the opposition to focus on issues that will improve the lives of Kenyans. We go about a Bungeri in America from Swana or our election act amendment. Ya kusema lazima tuweke sheria ambayo inaweza zingatia maneno ya election ikuwe sawa sawa. Hii maneno ya audit ya election ambayo ni opita isije ika kuwa ni jambo ya kuzungumzia tena na tunakuomba na tunafunga mkono mambo ya election ilisa 27 2022 august Kutu Secretary General Francis Atoli has dismissed the demand by the LSK that he apologizes for supporting the alleged quirk in the legal profession, Brian Munda. In a statement, Atoli has insisted that he will support Munda and that he will further push for recognition of prior learning, including in the legal profession. Atoli says that if LSK raises ethical issues about Munda, then it should equally highlight complaints raised by Kenyans against laws. This as LSK President Eric Theory has emphasized that Munda has violated 
violated the law by serving as a lawyer without qualifications, though he asked all those misled by Mwanda that he was a lawyer to go to their offices to be instructed on the next course of action. Two days ago, Mwanda was seen with former Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko promised to present him before the investigation officers, that is the DCI, and vowed to stand by him in his ordeal. This guy, he has never killed anyone. He's not a terrorist. He's not a criminal. Nibrenzake Anatomia. And I want to convey my compliments to you, Mr. Atoli, Court Secretary General. And I want to put it clear that, as I've promised on social media today in the morning, we are going to bail this guy out. But at DCI, we are going to produce Brian to your good officers next week, probably on Monday. Transoya Senator Alan Chisang has been linked to an exposed gold scam as three suspects are being apprehended. According to the Director of Criminal Investigations, the suspects were arrested in Nairobi's Porsche Bunda estate over the weekend. DCI said they have been furnished with information showing that the suspects are associated with Senator Chisang. The two were arrested following a complaint made by a South African national identified as Raf Manyaka, who was said to be defrauded a colossal amount of money by the suspects. Meanwhile, Senator Alan Chisang has distanced himself from allegations that he is linked to a gold scam and authored by the Director of Criminal Investigations. This is News I'm Dennis Alceto. Good morning. Spice FM, Nakuru. All right, so looking at a lot of busyness on Jogo Road, getting towards the CBD. It's also heavy coming off the thicker superhighway, much heavier than it was about 30 minutes ago. And also looking at uh, Kambu Road, packed up quite some, going towards Mufaiga Square, bumper to bumper, through and through. Limuru Road, extremely busy. What happens when the rains come down? Everybody else gets out on the streets and moves a lot slower. So, okay, we're going to move slower today, it looks like. So we need to be very careful because there will be a lot of traffic in different parts. It's also busy early, coming out of Westlands. And Gong Road is also starting to pile up. Naivasha Road busy onto Gitanga. And then everybody out towards into Kileleshwa, Oloi Tok Tok Road, then going towards James Gishuru out from Zima Springs. That's going to do the thing for a while. We saw Juja Road busy. We also saw Kangundo busy as well as Manyanja Road touching on Outer Ring. Let's look at Langata Road, which is all starting to pile up. And Cabana's going towards North Airport Road and then towards um, the Eastern Bypass is also doing the rounds this morning. Let's keep an eye on things. Traffic hour seems to have started early today. Let's talk on Spice FM, KE on X, and try to keep things moving as best we can. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, Controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is The Situation Room. The only way to start your day. Good morning and welcome to the second hour of Kenya's biggest conversation. That's seven minutes, eight minutes after seven. It's the 16th day of October 2023. Asante Sana for joining us. Happy Monday live on Spice FM on KTN Home and YouTube and Facebook. Kenya's biggest conversation. Looking forward to the 29th of this month because we will be running. Yes, we will. It's the 20th edition of the Standard Chartered Nairobi Marathon. It takes place come the 29th and um, look, a 20th edition is a special one, wouldn't you say? It gives us an opportunity to come out and run for a good cause. Have you registered? You can do so on www.nairobimarathon.com mm. where you pay 2,000 shillings and get the opportunity to then participate in this race which touches lives, in this marathon which touches lives. The Future Makers Programme is the benefit 
beneficiary of all of this and it makes sure that young people, especially girls and those with disability, have a chance to learn, to earn and to grow. Yes, indeed. We are on to the second week of Kasiri, the new show on uh, DSTV, Maisha Magic Plus, DSTV Channel 163 and Go TV Channel what? Channel 3. three. If you haven't watched it, it airs at 7.30 p.m. <coughs> on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. It aired last week. It goes in, into the second week again this tonight at 7.30 p.m. Kasiri, very, very good local production on Maisha Magic Plus. If you'd like to catch up, to catch up just tune into DSTV Channel 163 and Go TV Channel 3. Dial star 423 hash or download my DSTV or my Go TV apps and catch up and stay connected. Remember, you can actually catch up with shows that you missed. Like City, for example, wants them to accumulate. So if you can six. So last week and then this week, there'll be six yes, episodes. Yes, now you can sit properly. Now. Now. This weekend, Kwanzaa, this is as you or Mashuja Day and in, in, in your proper weekend. You sit, you watch. Watch nicely. Yes. You can do that by downloading my DSTV or my GoTV app, right? And you can catch up with all the episodes that you've missed. It's the way to go. Now, we've seen what happened over the weekend. And um, this is following a decision of the court after a protracted court dispute over a piece of land in Athi River. The East Africa Portland Cement Company claimed ownership of this land. A society calling itself Aimimalu Kenya Society uh, had sued the EAPCC seeking declaration of ownership and permanent injunction against the cement <coughs> processor from dealing with this land until the matter is fully heard and determined. In the intervening period, there are people who have gone and bought land um, secured the lands and started building and living on that piece of land. After the court order, the government, uh, EAPCC, helped by the government officials, went and started demolishing all structures that have been put there. We have seen the cries, homes brought down, families left homeless. Many of them are crying and they're wondering, so what really happened to us? We are hosting one of them this morning, Bishop Richard Ambundo, uh, Bishop with the Hope Evangelistic Ministries, which is in one of those um, areas, pieces of land, is here. He has lost his church and also his house. He's here with us. Let's hear the story from him. Bishop, good morning. Good morning to sir. Welcome to Kenya's biggest conversation. This is the Situation Room. We call that the hot seat of the Situation Room. Thank you very much. We want to hear the story from you, from what you know about this particular dispute and how you ended up here and how you ended up buying and building on this land. But to welcome you to the conversation, City Muga has the day's proverb. Every week, City has proverbs from one country mm -hmm. and every day he has a different proverb from that country. This week, he says he's taking us to Rwanda. Yes, the Republic of Rwanda. Mm -hmm. If you call a piece of wood a child, you can never use it to light a fire since it has become so precious. If you call a piece of wood your child, uh -huh. then you can never use it to light a fire mm. because it has become precious. That's Kofu. When you listen to this proverb, what's your interpretation of it? What do you think the proverb is telling us? Uh, I think he can repeat it again because uh, <laughs> missed it. What and Rudia? Rudia. If you call a piece of wood a child, and bad luck with him, firewood, na itam toto, amu atu ipatiye jina. You can never use it to light a fire since it has become so precious. Yeah, uh, to me, uh, whatever. Jochota kilo nacho kichukulia uh, na uweze kukidhamini sana mm -hmm. uh, ukikidhamini sana manufaa kama jinsi kingekusaidia mamali ingekusaidia unaweza kosea maana kuna udhamana ule ambao uko ndani ya hiyo kitu so usikiangalie sana angalia kazi yake mhm mm -hmm. mm -hmm. maanani Mhm. Mm Ambacho labda hakina kipimo. Mhm. Mm so ikifika mahali pa matumizi mm -hmm. inaweza kuwa chombo cha kuabudiwa. Mm -hmm. Kuliko chombo ambacho kinatakikana ikufae. Ni kweli. Asante. Nashukuru. Mm -hmm. Do not worship 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Bishop, yeah. we've seen the story, and um, this story of East Africa Portland cement has been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. Portland land, uh, people who have bought in various parts of Portland land, mm -hmm. and Portland land is vast. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it cuts across actually two sides of Mombasa Road and, mm -hmm. and all. Mm -hmm. Tell us first, where exactly is your home, the one that was brought down? Iko pandegani yuki toka tuelekeze kutoka kutoka apa sasa tufike uko. Okay, uki uneza tumia njia mbili. Njia ya kwanza uneza uka pita the river. Alafu wende KMC, mm -hmm. kuna station ya infrastructure ya AP kwa pale. Mm -hmm. Unaingililia pale, uh, unapita county. Ukisha pita county, undio unateremuka, mana imekwa into blocks, unateremuka, unafika kwangu. Upita okay. county kwanza. Mm -hmm. Ama, upitie kitengela, mm -hmm. uingilie... Uh, uh, karibu na kanisa la PCA huwa tunaita Deliverance Road mm -hmm. uh, ukisha fika Deliverance Road uh, ukimalizana na hiyo lami unavuka Red Muse mm. ukisha vuka Red Muse uh, kutoka hapo ni kama kilomita mbili uh, ama mbili na nusu takuku kwa nyumba yangu mm. kwa hivyo mimi ninaishi maeneo hiyo unaweza tumia hiyo barabara ama ukiwa unatoka na uh, Mombasa ama machako suneza mua kupitia Simba Cement mm -hmm. and then uh, uteremuke na ukuje na vuke uh, daraja la SGR mm -hmm. kutoka pale bado unazunguka tu narudi kwa ngusoni kona njia kama tatu niseme tena ya ine uenda ukitoka na Manga Road mm -hmm. kajado kuna maale ambapo panaitua Yukos pia bado unaze ingililia pale Bado inarudi kwangu. Inafika paka hapo. Inafika paka pale. Iyo area mmeitaje? Uh, Iyo area uwa, iko na majina mm. uh, kulingana na wakazi. Mm. Kama sasa sisi area yetu ukikuja, ukivuka, uh, ukivuka reli, ukisema unenda upper hill, mm. mana hapo kwetu ilikuwe na kaka mlima kidogo na mijengo imejengwa pale, mm. uh, tulipatia jina kulingana na maeneo kuna unaona kwingine wanaita county mm -hmm. kuna sehemu nyingine unapata wanaita uh, wanaita uh, kwa reli maana mm -hmm. hapo ndio mahali reli inasimamia mm -hmm. reli mzee inasimama kwa station watu wanachukuliwa pale mm -hmm. so hii maeneo imepewa kila kila eneo imepewa jina kulingana na vile ambavyo ilivyo lakini eneo eneo ni moja tu Sasa uki jina lenye linajulikana kwa wengi sana wanaita county. Mm. Mm. Wewe ulinunua ama ulipewa hili shamba? Mimi nilinunua hii shamba mm. na nilinunua mwaka wa 2017. Mm. Niliponunua hili shamba uliuziwa na nani? Niliuziwa na kambuni MN na shirika na shirika ambalo linaitwa Aimi Malu Kenya mm. Society. Hao ndi walikuuzia shamba? Hao ndi walinuuzia shamba. Ulijuaje kuhusu ili shamba? Uh, kitengela nimeka, nilingia kitengela mwaka wa 03. Mm. Na nilipo kaka kitengela, ni, nilisikia bari za hiyo shamba wakati after uh, post uh, election violence. Mm. Mana kwa kukaa kitengela, uh, nilipoteza nafasi ya kuweza kununua uh, ardhi pale kwa sababu uh, wakati nilingia ilikuwa chini mm. sasa marafiki walio niitia shamba wakaniambia hapa mashamba yuko sasa mimi nikaogopa maana pia iku kwa imejengwa hakuku mm. na watu hiyo maeneo ilikuwa na kaa mbaya kabisa mm. lakini nika nikajitahidi kidogo taro ikakataa sasa nikaamua kukaa kwa nyumba za wenyewe mm -hmm. kwa hivyo niliporudi nikiwa na pesa hapo mahali kununua nikapata kutoka kwa shilingi nilikuwa na uzio 150 na rafiki yangu Plot. yes ya 50 50 100 mm. uh, nikapata yuko 3 million <laughs> wakati nilirudi kutoka 2017 kwa hiyo uh, uh, ilikuwa ni 2013 mara ya kwanza ikiwa 150000 yes. ilikuwa 2000 ilikuwa 2003 2003 yeah, mwisho mwisho baada ya miaka 10 
ukirudi hapo 2013 Mm. ukapata ni 3 milioni ukapata yuko milioni 3 sasa hiyo mm. milioni 3 ikanishtua nikarudi tena mm. so nikawa ninajaribu kutafuta plot mm. ya kununua maana niliona nimekaa kwa nyumba eh, za wenyewe pia na mimi nataka uh, niweze kukaa kwangu mm. Kwenye nilikuwa napata ile na pesa kidogo ya milioni moja na nusu ilikuwa ni kama kilomita saba kutoka kitengela wow. Sasa mimi nikatulia katika kutulia uh, katika hii kuzunguka marafiki vile mnapiga piga store waka, moja akaniambia na kuna uh, ploti zinauzwa pande hii ambazo zinauzwa laki nne mm. lakini unaweza ukanegotiate upate na laki tatu na maybe 1080 mm. na mimi nikachukua nafasi ya kusema kama ziko namna hivyo wacha na mimi niteremuke niende nizione mm. e, nilienda nikatembea hiyo area nikakuta area pia ni nakaa kichaka kidogo mm. e, ikaniogopesha maana sikuona nyumba za watu wengi niliona nyumba za watu wawili tu mm. wenye walikuwa nakaa pale bisho kunaogopa kichaka eh? E, unajua ukiingia mahali upate nwe peke yako unapelekwa huko na uoni nyumba ya mwisho wendi unakaa mwisho lazima utaogopa <laughs> kwa sababu e, ni kawaida ya mwanadamu wanataka <laughs> huwa na majirani e, majirani uh-huh. e, basi mimi nikaamua nikarudi hmm. niporudi lakini nikasikia mbona hiyo nilipoteza e, plot Hmm. na nikarudi nikapata ikiwa iko juu sana. Hmm. Hii inaweza kuwa namna hivyo kama ile nyingine. Utapata imeenda. Utapata imeenda. Hey. Bas mimi nikasema wacha ni niende kwa ofisi, niende nitafute kujua hiyo ofisi iko wapi. Sasa ndio nilienda nilipelekwa na huyo mzee akanipeleka kwa ofisi. Nikakutana na watu ofisi pale. Wa hmm. hii Lukenya Society sasa. Ndio. Haimema Lukenya. Mbaya ofisi yao uh, iko at River Devic. Hmm. Nilienda nikafika nikapata kwanza ni ofisi unajua mambo ya mashamba inakuanga ni mambo ngumu. Hmm. So niliingia nikaona kweli ni ofisi na nikaridhika. Hmm. Nikauliza maswali nikaridhika. Hmm. Uh, kutoka hapo kawaida ya kununua shamba lazima wende ufanye search kwanza. Hmm. Nikatoka hapo mimi mwenyewe nika nikaondoka kidogo maana mimi ni askofu na pasta wangu mmoja wa Kajado mm. uh, bibi ya, uh, uh, bwana yake anafanya kwa lands mm. mimi nilimpigia simu nikamwambia mimi nataka kununua shamba mahali fulani mm. sijui mambo ya mashamba sana hebu niangalie hii shamba kama iko sawa mm. akaniambia ilikuwa jioni akaniambia nitakujibu kesho mm-hmm. Uh, kesho nami pia nikajituma mwenyewe kwenda kufanya search. Mm-hmm. E, LR number 10424. Mm-hmm. Nikafanya search. Mm-hmm. Ikaniletea Aimi Malukenya. Mm-hmm. Unafanya search wapi? Nilifanya e, search kwa lands. Wapi? Nilifanyia hapa Nairobi tu. Hapa Ardhi House. Yes. Ulikuja wewe mwenyewe? Nilikuja mimi mwenyewe. Ukaenda mpaka Ardhi House. Nikaenda mpaka hapo. Mm-hmm. Sasa naye jioni naye huyo huyo uh, bwana ya, ya, ya yule ya mchungaji mm. akaniambia hiyo uh, shamba haina maneno mm. nikiangalia na yona iko sawa. Mm. Sasa mimi nika proceed tena kwenda kwa, kwa wao nikaangalia nikaona sasa juu iko chini wacha ni, nitafute tu pesa tuzuri. Mm. Nikaenda hapo nikanunua kwanza uh, E, plotine mm. e, mwishowe tena nikarudi e, hizo ni zangu za kukaa mm. nikarudi tena nikanunua hapo e, kambili hiyo mm. sasa ni ya mahali ya maombi tu maana niliona hapo mahali watu wanaweza ingia hapo kwa kuombea mm. nikarudi tena nika nikanunua tena ploti zingine nne mm-hmm. sasa za kujenga sasa kanisa Mm-hmm. maana mali ya maombi ni mtu akitaka kuomba tu niliona kichaka wewe ni treat. nzuri yes yes mm-hmm. na ime, imesaidia watu sana mm-hmm. lipo nunua nikajenga hapo nyumba ya wanaume wanawake nikaweka hapo cho nikaweka bafu mm-hmm. mtu anaweza kuja akae hata siku tatu siku nne kiita Mungu wake mzuri na atoke na aende na kama anataka kukunywa kahawa nikaandika hapo kijana mwenye anachunga hapo mm-hmm. Nikarudi sasa mwenyewe nikaru, eh, baada ya hiyo prayer sender ndio nikarudi sasa kujenga nyumba yangu. Nikaanza nikaenda nikatafuta jamaa kanjorea plan nikarudi pale 
basi nika sasa wakati huu wote ukinunua hizi plot ndio plot nne za kwanza mm-hmm. ulilipa hawa aimimalu Kenya mm-hmm. ndio walikupatia nini walinipa certificate mm-hmm. uh, katika hiyo certificate mm-hmm. nikapewa nipewa certificate na nikapewa uh, copy ya, ta- ya mother title mm-hmm. mother title nilipewa mm-hmm ambaye ilikuwa ina ishikilia ama zile eh, document za kusaidia mm. nikiwa nazo nikitukiendelea kungoja eh, process ya title ikishatoka mm. ndio sasa tuweze kupokea title so kitu ya kwanza ilipewa ni allotment letter Ye, ndio yeah. yes na copy ya mother title <coughs> ndio for these four plots ndio for the two acres another mm-hmm. allotment letter ndio. and another copy of the mother title ndio for the other four plots another allotment letters Ndiyo. and mm. copy of the mother the title. title yes hiyo ni 2017 ndio si ndio ndio ulipata title sasa hivi sasa vile uko uko na title uh, kwa sasa sijapata title maana wakati tulikuwa tunaendelea na kusubiri mm. uh, tukapata habari ya kwamba kuna wale watu walikuwa wanataka kunyakua hiyo shamba tuka kunyakua kivipi Yaani ni sasa uh, kunyakuwa ina maana kwamba unajua uh, si ni yako mm. na kuna yule ambaye anataka kusema ni yake. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, mwenye tunajua ni yake huyu mwingine hatujui ni yake so huyu mwenye anataka kuchukua kwa huyu so, uh, 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 ni munyaguzi okay. uh, sijui kama ndio Kiswahili mzuri hata kama sivyo itakuwa tu munyaguzi mm. eh ndio E, kwa hivyo tulipopata hiyo habari mm. na tukaambiwa kwamba uh, kesi imepelekwa kotini. kotini na kwa sababu kesi imepelekwa kotini uh, pia kut, uh, mother title ama title mm. imepelekwa pia kotini. kotini kwa sababu wakati kesi imeenda kotini wanataka kujua shamba ni ya nani mm-hmm. walipotaka kujua shamba ni ya nani kesi ikiwa iko kule kotini hawa walitishwa Uh, title na huko kwingine so hawaezi process subdivision ya hiyo title kama hawana sababu kesi kokotini kesi kokotini na nyinyi mkasikia hivyo na mkaridhika yeah. so tuliposikia uh, okay tuli uh, tukuridhika sana hmm. tulifuatilia maana lazima uridhike kama umeshajua kwamba uh, mambo imekuwa mzuri hmm. kwa hivyo kuridhika kwenye tulikuja kuridhika ni 2019 mm-hmm wakati ambaye barua ilitoka kwa DCI ambaye ilikuwa ina kilia ya kwamba title ya Aimi Malu Kenya uh, wameichunguza wameangalia wamepata iko sawa sasa hapo ndio sisi tuliridhika na hata mimi nikaongeza gorofa moja juu ya nyumba yangu mm. barua ya DCI ilikuwa imeandikiwa nani eh, barua ya DCI ilikuwa title ilikuwa imechukuliwa kule kwa DCI kwa DCI mm. na ilikuwa imeenda kwa ajili ya kuchunguzwa mm. iweze kuangaliwa na wajue kwamba hii uh, hii mvutano katikati ya Aimi mm. na Portland hii shamba ni ya nani so, ulikuwa nafanya uchunguzi kwa niaba ya koti ama ilikuwa ni nini ilikuwa ni msukosuko ambao ilikuweko ndio ikafanya wafanye uchunguzi ama ilikuwa kwa niaba ya koti Uh, kotini koti waliamuru uh, title ziletwe maana masuala ya mashamba mm-hmm. uh, kulingana na elimu ile si mingi kidogo yenye najua kwamba DCI ndio wanashughulikia sana mm-hmm. au wengine uh, walikuwa na allotment letters pia uh, majirani wangu majirani wangu mm. eh wote maana ukinunua hauwezi nunua na usikose kupewa agreement mm-hmm. pamoja na certificate ama allotment ya, kuku, ya kukusaidia uh, kujua kwamba hapa ni kwako ukingoja title okay. eh, walikuwa wanapeana unanunua unapewa mm. vizuri sana okay. eh. na hao ambao walikuja kusema ati hizi eh, plots ni zao mm-hmm. walikuwa na letters pia ama walikuwa na certificate ama title sasa wale walikuja kusema uh, shamba, eh, shamba, shamba ni yao, shamba yao. Portland. Eh, kulingana na sisi vile unajua pia kama kama residents mm. tulikuwa tunafuatilia mm. wao uh, title yao hawakupeleka kotini mm. kulingana na vile ambavyo walivyokuwa wameagizwa mm. 
So sisi tulivyo pewa habari kulingana na koti mm. tukaambiwa kwamba ilikuwa nini ilikuwa uh, ime, ime kili, imekuwa cleared mm. kutoka kwa DCI mm. na wakatuma DCI wakatuma hiyo barua kwa kwa, eh, kwa lands mm. eh, kuprove ya kwamba hiyo shamba mm. ni ya Aimi Malukenya okay. mm. eh, na hiyo sasa ikatupatia kuridhika na kutulia sana kabisa Okay so the copy of the letter that um, uh, bishop has come with is a copy of a letter with the letter head of the DCI um, written to the CEO of the National Land Commission on the 12th of March 2019 the headline of this letter is status of investigations over LR number 10424 Mavoko sub county Machakos county References here by made to your letter uh, dated February 2020 over the above matter. So clearly, uh, the National Land Commission had written to DCI. A high court in Machakos uh, on ELC suit 74 of 2014, that's between Aimimalu, Kenya versus Portland, issued a court order on the 29th of January 2015 instructing the DCI to carry out forensic investigations on two titles held by the two parties and report to the court within 45 days. On the 28th of February 2015, Amimalu Kenya presented their original title to DCI. On 16th of March, a letter was done to Kimanga and Company Advocate, Notary uh, Public and Commissioner for Oaths, and Sankali and Company Advocates, who were the lawyers representing both parties. The respondent letter was received by its company's legal officer, Laurent Echulet, uh, in March, noting that nothing was forthcoming from Portland. Another letter was written to them, releasing the original title for verification. On 25th of March, another letter was done to the chief land registrar and house in Athi House, Nairobi, to confirm real owners of the land. On 2nd of, of April 2015, a confirmation letter was received from the Ministry of Lands, Housing and Urban Development, signed by Mashora Mogare, confirming the title to belong to Aimimalu, Kenya, and a copy is attached. Ever since East African Portland Cement has never presented its purported original title deed in its possession, if any, to the DCI as ordered, and the High Court in Machakos for forensic investigations. The failure by the CEO of East African Portland Cement or its lawyers or its agents to present for verification its title to the DCI as ordered by the High Court was proof enough that it did not have any title to present as was done by Amy Malu Kenya. The status as of now, the land belongs to Aimimalu, Kenya, unless otherwise proved. This was then signed by an officer called John Karioki for the Director of Criminal Investigations in 2019. Mm -hmm. To the CEO, the National Land Commission. Aye. Sasa hii the National Land Commission. Lakini ule ambaye ali instruct DCI in a chunguze ni koti ni koti mlipata any documentation from court ya kusema judge amesema nimepata barua kutoka kwa court because kwa DCI kwa DCI mm -hmm. ya kusema sijapata any title from portland uh, kutoka hiyo wakati mpaka uh, mpaka wakati ambao uh, nitasema majuzi juzi mm. uh, tujapata habari yote kama kama Portland wa maipeleka uh, barua yao ama uh, title yao kotini mm. eh. na inaweza kuwa mmesikia ama mmepata kupashwa habari kulingana na uamuzi wa koti uh, kulingana na si kesi lienda kotini kesi mm. ndio yes, sasa uamuzi wake umewahi kusikia uamuzi wote sasa Uwe, ule uamuzi wenye tumepata ni ule wa juzi tu wa, wa wiki iliyopita Jumatatu mm -hmm. ule ambao uh, ilikuwa hata ni kusiki, eh, ni hearing tu mm -hmm. ambaye uh, walipo tulipokuwa tunajiandaa kusikia sasa koti inasema nini mm -hmm. sisi tukashangaa ya kwamba koti imetupilia uh, kesi mm -hmm. nje na na kufunga file kwa nini sasa hiyo maswali ndiyo tunayo maana bado hatujaweza kufata eh, kujua kwa nini walifanya namna hivyo mm -hmm. maana sisi tulikuwa tunajua eh, hii kukua judgment mm -hmm. eh, ilikuwa ni maswali ya kusikizwa juu kuna kesi ilikuwa iendelee 
Mm. Sasa hiyo siku ilikuwa tu ni kufungwa uh, faili mm. na kesi, kutupa kesi na kufungwa, uh, kufungwa faili. Mm. Sasa hakuna jambo lingine sisi kama residents tunaweza sema uh, zaidi ya hapo tunaweza kuwa tuna Namjui kitu chochote. Mm. Wacha tuchukue break kidogo then we come back and continue the conversation. We are hosting Bishop Richard Ambundo who is one of the people who have been affected by the ongoing demolitions in what has now been declared by the court to be land belonging to East Africa Portland Cement and this is still in dispute according to the landowners because he's one of them. He bought several pieces of land between 2017 and to date. He has eight separate plots measuring 50 by 100 and two acres. And from them, he, rece- he bought this land from the association called Aimimalu Kenya Society. Aimimalu Kenya gave him um, allotment letters for each of those pending processing of the title deed. Case went to court. The court has now said that this land actually belongs to Portland Cement and demolitions have been going on. What exactly is happening in this case 25 minutes to 8 good morning this is the situation room the only way to start your day Good morning and I love your show. Thank you. <laughs> Having come from a Kikuyu radio background, I migrated to Spice <laughs> because of the content. I was born in a slum, but somehow I got a break in life. So sometimes when you see the sweat coming out because of the passion and whatever it is, <laughs> <laughs> behind the noise there are people and we share the same umbilical cord. It shouldn't be like that. I am so disappointed. We used to tell Honorable uh, Baraila Amolotinga that he's doing police of conmanship. And even President Uhuru Kenyatta, Sirikali, he is doing conmanship. You cannot promise people that you reduce tax, then you double. In politics, mm. there is uh, the issue of trust. Mm. For you to turn around and then stab the same people who gave you that trust, there is no other level of dishonesty. And I mabo, utaona dunia tu. The Situation Bo. Kenya's biggest conversation. Cloudy conditions in Nairobi this morning, 17 degrees with highs of 25. And we'll see highs of 23 in a cloudy in Nakuru at 14. It's 16 and cloudy in Nyeri, highs of 23 and 16 and cloudy in Eldred with highs of 24. Sunny conditions at 26 in Mombasa and it's sunny as well in Malindi at 27. 20 degrees and cloudy in Kisumu with highs of 28 and 27 will be the high in a cloudy Kakamega at 18. It's 19 and cloudy in Kampala with highs of 25 and Dar es Salaam will see highs of 32 on a sunny Monday morning. 12 degrees and cloudy with severe thunderstorms in Johannesburg and highs of 19 and it's clear at 25 in Lagos with highs of 30, 23 and clear in Kinshasa with highs of 32. All right, where are we? Uh, Monday morning is a busy one. Getting into traffic hour proper now, according to the clock. But movement started heavy while a while ago. Uh, let's look at what's happening. Eastern bypass going out towards the right junction, inbound traffic right around the AP Training College junction as well. It's causing some traffic. Are you coming in from Cabanas towards North Airport Road? That's going to be busy for a minute. And then look at the thicker superhighway. Heavy, heavy with traffic, bumper to bumper, well past. Uh, GSU well into uh, Zimmerman and way beyond that Githurai coming in from uh, Kahawa Sukari very very busy traffic this morning and we're also looking at heavy coming off of Kiambu Road as well as Limuru Road into the city are you coming out of Westlands also that's quite busy coming in from James Gishiro and so traffic hour everywhere you look let's keep an eye on things talk to us on Spice FM KE on X Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. Conversation for Denise. 94.4. The Bishop Richard Ambundo of Hope Evangelistic Ministries, one of the people who have been affected in the ongoing demolitions in Athi River. He owns several plots and a two acre piece of land that he bought in 2019 from 2019 he's been buying these pieces of land so this land is now in, has been in this dispute between the East Africa Portland Cement and an association called Aimimalu Kenya Society 
directly translated Aimima Lukenya is the farmers of Lukenya. Mm-hmm. So Portland says that it was mining on this particular piece of land until it finished mining. And then Aimima Lukenya says it actually acquired this land a long time ago. The matter went to court and Aimima Lukenya sued Portland and these cases were consolidated on October 9th Machakos County Machakos uh, court lady justice Nyukuri ruled that the plaintiff's suit stands dismissed and struck with no costs, with cost to the defendant. This land in question, that is LR 10424, measures approximately 4,298 acres. Uh, according to court, court documents, the society had produced what the court determined to be a fake title deed with entry number seven claiming the land was transferred to Aimimalu, Kenya, on May 20th, 1980, yet the society was not in existence since records of the Registrar of Societies show it was registered on 25th of September 2014. In her ruling, the judge noted that the plaintiff had failed to physically serve the amended pleadings to all the defendants within 21 days as ordered by the court on May 17th, 2023. He cautioned the plaintiff that failure to do so would lead to striking out the case. And now this is what has happened. Bishop, you've told us how you got to acquire this land. Mm -hmm. And in each of these cases, you got the mother title, a copy of the mother title, and an allotment letter. Mm -hmm. Was that the size of the land on the mother title? 4,200 acres. Yes. Yoyote. Yoyote. Now, Yoyote, Southern Yoyote, I Kenya, may subdivide into 50 by 100 plots. Na wanauzia watu. Na wanauzia watu. Na wengine wakanunua, wengine wakakuja wakakuwa majirani wako. Na wote wakona the same allotment letter, copy of mother title. Na wote wamefanya search, inawanyesha kwa land ministry, that e title yiko sawa. E title yiko sawa. Haya. Kuna wakati ulisikia Portland, ama watu wengine wakisema, chungeni kuna shamba yetu inauzwa uh, mimi nili sikusikia mm-hmm. uh, uh, ilo jambo nilianza nikiwa ninaishi pale mm-hmm. ndio hata ilikuwa ni rafiki yangu aliniambia ni, uh, buangalia katika uh, news actually ilikuwa ni kwa gazeti ilikuwa imeandikwa nyuma ya gazeti uh, nation mali i mean kwa upande wa, wa biashara mm. so nilipoangalia ndio nikawa nina shangaa kidogo sababu hapo ndio nilianza kujulia kidogo kwamba kulikuwa na mvutano mm. ama kulikuwa na uh, case ambaye ilikuwa ime inaendelea ama imeekwa kotini so mm. hakuna mtu yote alikuwa ameniambia chunga kama hii shamba iko vibaya mm. eh Ujua, kitu ambacho bado mimi na shanga na ya kwamba ulinua ardhi ulianza kununua in 2013 and uh, 2017, 2017. Mm. okay now mda huo ote na nyinyi no, wacha nirudi nyuma kidogo ni watu wangapi ambao wanaishi hiyo eneo unaoishi wewe tuko na tunaongelea watu karibu 1000 hmm Elfume. Ndiyo. Watu ni wengi. Mm. Kina cho ni shangaza ni kwamba kesi imekuwa kotini. Ndiyo. Na muda huu wote hamjasikia mambo yote kuhusu kotini na kuhusu kesi isipokuwa mliposikia kwamba koti ime nini? Imeamua na kwamba nyinyi mnaoishi hapo amstahili kuishi hapo, si ndio? Uh, koti wakati tuli hii ya mwisho hii ya Jumatatu iliyopita yes. uh, hapo nyuma uh, tumekuwa tukijua walikuwa wanaenda kotini maana wakati tulisikia habari ya kesi mm. wakienda wanaenda na wanatuambia uh, progress Mat- matokeo, yes. eh, matokeo vile yalivyo so sisi hatukukua sana na na imani kidogo ya kwamba uenda maybe vitu vinaweza badilika viwe uh, kinyume na sisi sisi tulijua kwamba mambo yatakuwa sawa maana uh, ni, ni Portland 
inasema kuna mtu anataka eh, ni ni aimi inasema kuna mtu anataka kuchukua mali yangu ambaye ni Portland kwa hivyo inataka uh, koti iweze kuambia huyu kwamba usikuje kuchukua mali ama wachana na mali ya mwenyewe hiyo mm-hmm. ndio sisi tulikuwa tunajua ndio mwelekeo ilikuwa inaenda uh, aimi baki na mali yake mm-hmm. mm. okay. so wakati mlisikia mm-hmm. Portland ilikuwa imeingia kwa hii kusema hii mm-hmm. shamba yenyewe ni yetu mm-hmm. mulifanya nini ama mulianza kusikia uh, wakati tulisikia hii eh, Portland tuliita uh, tulienda kuonana na chairman tukamwambia maana si mimi sasa peke yangu mm-hmm. maana ilikuwa imeanza kuingia kwa masikio ya wengi mm-hmm. tukaambia chairman atafute nafasi uh, address sisi kama wakazi atuambie exactly ni nini inaendelea katikati yake atuweke kwa mwangaza mzuri mm-hmm. naambie watu vizuri mno sana na aonyeshe kama atuonyeshe hata na thibitisho ya kwamba tuko safe uh, hapo mahali tuko maana kidogo kuna, kulikuwa na uh, tuvitisho kidogo unaona askari wanaingia mm-hmm. alafu kidogo wanatoka wanaenda mm-hmm. unaona wanaingia kidogo wanatoka sasa hapo ndio uh, ikawa tunaita sana mkutano na chairman kweli alikuwa anatokea na anakuja na anaambia residents anawaambia kwamba uh, tafadhalini na anatoa anatoa zote hata anatusomea kuna kipindi hata anatuleta hata na lawyer wakili mm-hmm. ana address residents uh, waweze kujua wanaenda aje wamefika wapi na mambo yako namna gani kwa hivyo residents tulikuwa tulipo tukisikia ama wakati tulikuwa nasikia tulikuwa tunatafuta tuna kujua ni nini inaendelea kama wagazi na tunaambiwa kuna mmoja wenu ambaye ali engage lawyer wakili akasema twende Avi house tufuatilie hii title tuone kama iko na documents zote unajua title by the time title mm. inatoka kuna mm. kwa hiyo file yake iko na all the documents that shows the history of transactions on the title did you ever get that no to show you know at what point did aimi malu kenya start owning this land and before aimi malu kenya started owning this land this was the land the owner of the land government community who is aimi who is the society uh, we didn't go mm. But uh, uh, what we did was uh, actually the chairman had to give us uh, uh, the land history mm. during uh, these meetings he would uh, uh, tell us uh, how the, uh, the land or how Aimi started existing mm. the, who was Aimi how it started existing in the land and then uh, all the history he would give us he would mm. tell us uh, how uh, how Uh, they acquired the land yeah and uh, now who was aimi how uh, how did they come to uh, to own the land mm. uh, those ones they would uh, address us so from what you were told mm-hmm. give us that story who is aimi and how did they start occupying or owning this land uh, i will give a little bit of what uh, 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 what i know yeah and what uh, he told us eh? yeah uh, aimi Uh, uh, walikuwa wal, wal, ilikuwa ni formation ya viongozi mm. ambao hao viongozi walipokuwa katika harakati za kuendelea na mipangilio yao uh, walikuwa hiyo shamba ilikuwa ina ilikuwa kwanza ya mababu zao mm-hmm. kwa hivyo kukatokelezea wa, wale ambao walikuja wakaanza kufanya hapo kazi. Mm-hmm. E, kazi kama kambuni ya makonge. Mm-hmm. Kutoka kwa kambuni ya makonge kukawa na wale ambao walikuja wakafanya hapo pia uh, kambuni ya ya, ya, ya uchimbaji mm-hmm. kidogo mm-hmm. ambaye zilipokuja na hivyo ilikuwa ya mababu zao. Mm. Sasa wao walikuja ku take over mm. kuchukua kuiendelesha na walipokuja kuiendelesha kama kama sasa 
vitukuu ama whichever we can mm. call descendants wa wale wa zai eh, eh, mm. so kulingana na wao mm. mwaka wa ilikuwa ni mwaka wa temanini ndio ilitoka kwa East Africa Portland mm. walikuwa wamechukua kwa sababu ya kufanya uchimbaji yeah. just mining mm. na hata kwa hiyo shamba hawakupata hizo uh, madini zenye walikuwa wanataka mm -hmm. kwa hivyo uh, wakarudi ikawa transferred kwa Aimi Malukenya sasa officially mm -hmm. sasa Aimi Malukenya wakachukua nafasi sasa kuendelesha kama community yani kwa njia nyingine ilifika wakati wakarudisha kwa community okay eh, sasa hii community ndio Aimi Malukenya so community sasa Aimi Malukenya sasa ina represent community ambayo ilikuwa hapo tangu zamani ndio okay ambayo ni shamba ya ya ya, ya anzesu, anzesu land the community is. land yes okay mm -hmm. sasa hapo ndio waka decide waanze kuuza shamba hapo sasa ndio walifika waka wakaamua waweka wafate mikakati inayofaa ndio waweze kwanza kuuza hiyo shamba mm. eh, hiyo ndio kidogo ninajua wakati hii mambo yote mvutano yote between Aimi Portland bado kuna wengine walikuwa wanaendelea kununua na kujenga eh walikuwa wanaendelea maana mm. wakukuwa wanaona zunona nasema hiyo unajua hizo plots zenye nasema si kuzinunua mara moja mm. hata kuna zingine bado nilinunua kwa kwa wengine kwa wenyewe walikuwa wamenunua eh mm. sababu hakukuonekana kama kuna kitu yote inaanza kuja kutokelezea mbaya mm. eh so watu walikuwa wanaendelea kununua tu mm. eh hata wiki iliyopita kabla ya ruling kuna mm. wale wamenunua mm. eh wiki iliyopita ruling ya koti katoka nyinyi mlijua mlipata any notice ya kwamba sasa by the end of this week tunataka nyinyi wote muhame hapa uh, Hapana ilikuwa ni jambo la kushangaza sana. Eh, wakati ruling ilitoka eh, tulifuatilia tu tukajua kama wakazi ya kwamba mm. kesi imetupiliwa. Mm. Sasa wakati tulipokuwa tumefuatilia hiyo tulikuwa tumetulia maana mara mingi sana eh, si kesi ikiwa imetupiliwa si unapewa nafasi kama una kitu unaweza ukasema kotini mm -hmm. ama kama una ile kwa pili mm. so sisi hatuku uh, atukupewa nafasi yeyote ama ya kuambiwa kwamba hameni mm. ama tuambiwa kwamba sasa uh, mumepewa muda fulani wa kuhama hamuna mtu yote alipewa hiyo mm -hmm. uh, ilipotoka uh, sisi tu, tu, ilipoisha tulijua kesi imeisha na baadaye Lajabu uh, ni kwamba uh, hiyo ilikuwa ni mandi siku ya alamisi ndio mambo ikaharibika kwa shamba sasa hapo atasidi watu wakaanza uh, waka, waka, wakaanza kubomolewa tu hii mm. thursday ya last week hii thursday ya last week hakuna notice yote mliyopata hamuna notice yote yenye tulipata tukaambiwa sasa muhame kama waka, kama wakazi hii shamba mm. ni ya wenyewe hatukupewa notice kuna kiongozi yoyote wa serikali ambaye amekuja kuwaona e, viongozi wa serikali national government uh, mubunge mubunge ma, mubunge uh, Mr. Makau mm. alikuwa alikuja kwa ground mm. na akaangalia kile kilikuwa kinaendelea lakini amekuja amekuja siku ya Ju, e, ya Jumamosi mm. e, ndi alifika pale tu na Makao MP wa ma, Mavoko wa sasa. Mavoko okay. e, na alikuwa hapo pamoja na uh, excellency governor mm. tukawa na Kalonzo mm. na ma, makao alikuwa pia na mbunge mwingine wa Kilome mm. e, walikuwa wabunge wawili walikuwa pale na governor pia alikuwa governor pia alifika kwa ground waliwaambia nini walipofika pale walituambia wana ende, wana consult uh, kuona vile ambavyo hiyo demolition inaweza ikasimama mm. uh, they would, they can stop the demolition so uh, akatuambia pia ameongea na rais mm. na rais akamwambia kwamba unajua 
Uh, nikirudi nyuma kidogo mm. nisamee kwa muda mm. mimi pia ni kiongozi wa kilaji ya wachungaji mm -hmm. na mi ni chairman wa pastors pale mm. inaitwa uh, Lukenya Village Association mm. na kuna pasta uh, Reverend Shedrack ndio mdogo wangu kwa hivyo uh, walipokuja sisi siku ya Friday mm. Mambo iliku, ilipo kuwa imechacha sana. Maana mm. sasa nyumba zinaangushwa. Mm. Watu wajambiwa hameni. Makanisa zinabomolewa. Mm. Sasa sisi tukaamua kama, kama gilaji. Mm. Ya kwamba jumamosi sisi tuende tuone governor. Mm -hmm. Kwa sababu sasa hizi. Watu waki, nyumba ikigongwa. Kanisa inafaa iwe ni mahali penye mtu waneza kimbilia. Mm hata kama ni kuegeza tu vitu twake mm. akijipanga lakini sasa nyumba imegongwa na kanisa kanisa kwa kwanza kanisa ndio ilikuwa kwanza kugongwa mm. na iliangushwa mimi nikiangalia nikiona namna hivi mm. it was so painful ilipo gongwa kanisa sasa unajua mahali pa matumaini pakishawekwa chini mtu mm -hmm. atafanya namna gani matumaini wakati ulienda kuona uh, governor wa machakos mm -hmm. did you get any idea feeling that alijua ni nini naendelea Uh, kusema ukweli governor hakukuwa anajua kulingana na, na vile mimi niliona mm. eh, kulingana na mimi mm. eh, ukiona mama anaongea paka analia mbele ya umati wa watu hiyo mm. kitu imefanya nini imemuuma sana sasa uh, alituambia asubuhi ya aliongea na na rais rais akamwambia ataangalia ya mambo kwa simu mm tena aka hiyo uh, ilikuwa ni friday mm. na akamwambia sasa saturday hakutafanywa demolition sasa saturday wakati tena hiyo mambo iliendelea mm. tena akatafuta rais alituambia alitafuta rais tena saturday asubuhi mm. bado uh, president akashika simu na akamwambia haya maneno anashughulikia sasa saturday ndio ziliangushwa mingi sana mm. sana so, kusema kwamba alikuwa anashughulikia mm because mm. ikiwa mtu amekwambia anashughulikia mambo na wewe yeah. matarajio yako ni kwamba watakomesha ndio ubomoaji wa vya nyumba mm -hmm. na badala ku koma inaongezeka inaongezeka inakwambia nini e, sasa ni kushughulikia kubomoa mm -hmm. yes eh hiyo tu that is if governor anakusema ukweli ya kwamba ameongea mm. na rais mm. kama if mm. governor kwa ukweli hakujua kile kinachoendelea mm. hakujua matokeo ya kotini na hakujua chochote kuhusu hiyo because yeye ni governor area hiyo wakati wa campaign mm. wao wote wa wanasiasa wakija kuomba kura hii kesi bado ilikuwa kotini kuna yeyote ambaye alisema hii shamba inafaa iende hivi na hivi kuna yeyote wanasiasa yeyote ambaye alikuja kwa hii shamba akasema hii shamba ni community land ya yeah. aimi malu Kenya ama ya wakamba ambao walikuwa wanaishi hapa kuna matamshi kama hayo uliosikia wote waliongea walisema nini watu walisema wanajua yuko kesi inaendelea katikati ya Portland mm. na aimi malu Kenya mm. na wanafahamu vizuri hata e, governor akasema nafahamu vizuri historia hiyo shamba ya kwamba shamba ni ya community mm. so katika capacity yake mm. na uwezo wa kuweza kushauriana watashauriana Uh, shamba hiyo mambo ya mzozo wa shamba ya community na na Portland, Portland yishe hivyo ndio walikuwa wanasema wakati wa campaign wakati wa campaign tangu campaign tangu ingia kwa ofisi kama governor mm. na MP makao na wengine mm. wamewahi ku, kuja kwa tembelea hapo walikuja mm -hmm. wamekuja walikuja maana vile nimesema hapo awali mm. ya kwamba Portland sasa zingine mlikuwa unasikia unamka asubuhi unaambiwa asubuhi polisi wako mahali fulani mm. na wana wanapiga watu mm. kwanza wakikuja wanakuja na fujo mm. sasa nyinyi kwa sababu mwezi anza kuengage vita katikati yako na polisi mnakimbilia kwa viongozi, kwa viongozi. Mm. so kuna mikutano imefanyika hapo kama mikutano mbili ile inazosema ile mkubwa kabisa mm. Uh, ile iliyokuwa mkubwa zaidi ilikuwa ni tarehe 17 Disemba iliyoisha ambayo viongozi wa Cumberland wote walikuwa mm. na 
wakawa wanasungumzia habari ya hilo jambo kuweza kusitishwa hilo jambo kuweza hiyo mzozo imalizike mm. Ma, mzozo wa mashamba iishe mm. watu waregeshewe shamba lao Okay. Yeah. Sasa acha nikuulize swali la mwisho. Mm. Askofu. Ndio. Ungependa nini? Ungependa kuona nini sasa? What is your one wish? Uh, kwanza niki nikiongea uh, kidogo ndani ya moyo inauma. Mm. Eh, sababu hata sura inaonyesha eh, dalili ya uchungu ambao mm, kunayo. Eh, sababu mm. uh, kuna watu ambao tuko hapo wengi sana. Mm. Na hao watu wa hawajui hawana pa kwenda wengine walichukua maloni for information kuna mtu alijinyonga kwa sababu ali eh huko kaunti alikuja akapata manyumba zimewekwa na hiyo nyumba yake ilikuwa amechu, alikuwa amechukua maloni mm. yana alishindwa atalipa aje nyumba iko chini mm. kwa hivyo mimi uh, matarajio yangu maana hii hatukuwa tumaambiwa kama tunahama mm. maana tungekuwa tumaambiwa uh, tungehama mapema lakini sasa kama serikali inaweza ikaangalia maana tulikuwa tunasema mtu mwenye ako mahali pake kama inaweza kama, kama ni kunegotiate wanegotiate na watu mm. mtu anunua ako ka sehemu yake kama inji inji ingine wanataka mm. eh wanunue tu na pia rais aweze kutusaidia mm. maana hapa vilio ziko huko mm. mingi sana mm. asante sana baskofu nashukuru Bishop Richard Ambundo is the bishop with the Hope Evangelistic. He is one of the homeowners and also um, leader of a church that's been demolished in Athi River in that dispute between Portland and Aimimalu, Kenya. Keep it here for more conversations, 8 a.m. Good morning, this is Newsworm Dennis Aseto. National Assembly is this week expected to debate the government's plan to send a thousand police officers to Haiti to restore order. The majority leader in the National Assembly, Kimani Chungwa, has said that the MPs will consider all the issues raised by Kenyans regarding the plan during the sessions to discuss the bill. When we get the request for approval as you approved in cabinet this week, for approval and consent from the National Assembly and Parliament for deployment of our police officers to the country of Haiti. We shall consider all matters that shall come before Parliament and be able to take into account all the concerns that the people of Kenya have raised. This is Interior Cabinet Secretary Kithure Kendiki has said that the deployment of officers to Haiti will not cost the taxpayers a dime as the exercise will be spearheaded by the United Nations for the exuding hope that Kenyan officers will deliver on their mandate. Kenya will not spend any money in the deployment of our officers in Haiti because the Haiti Peace mission is a united nations mission and the costs associated with the haiti mission will be met through the contributions of the member states of the united nations i want to assure the people of kenya that the way in the past kenyan soldiers and kenyan troops have succeeded to bring peace in many countries around the world even this time round we are going to succeed in haiti Meanwhile, Deputy President Ricardo Gachago has called upon Parliament to debate the issue when it goes to the House and give the deployment a green light as it elevates Kenya's position globally. Mambo ya kupeleka askari yetu haiti wa polisi ni kitu ya maana sana ya kwamba polisi wetu wa Kenya wametambuliwa ya kwamba ni officers who are professional ambaye wanaweza kuaminika kwenda kusaidia wenzao katika dunia. So tunauliza bunge tafadhali Leader of majority mutusaidie. The government has continued to distance itself from the continuous increase in the price of fuel in the country. The government has insisted that the increase in fuel products is as a result of OPEC country's decision to lower production of crude oil. Gladys Boss is the deputy speaker in the National Assembly. As we tell Kenyans about the cost, I mean the increase in fuel, is also to explain to them that it is nothing that it is not because of a failure by the government a failure by the head of state a failure by a cabinet or that or insensitivity for that matter it is because they are going on in the world that we have no control over so yes we are going through tough times 
Opposition leader Raila Odinga's hate aunt at President William Ruto for what he terms as meddling in Azimula Moja One Kenya Coalition Party Affairs. Speaking in Siaya County, Odinga accused President Ruto of trying to divide the coalition through unfounded speculations about wiper party leader Kalonzo Musyoka's presidential candidacy in the 2027 general election. Odinga spoke to the president through his interim acts that he will only have Mr. Musyoka to run against him come 2027. Telling Ruto to stop belittling the viable leader, he maintained that Azimio is intact and that the decision on who will be its next flag bearer shall only be made at an appropriate time. Kenyans are fed up. Kenyans are mesema hi si serikali naweza kwa minika. The high cost of living. Kenya kwanza wanasema ni jukumulao kwa sababu ndiyo wako na mamlaka. You can never take this country backwards. You can only take it as far and compare whatever you are saying. Matamshi yako ilinganishe na katiba. Anataka kutagawanya sisi. Baba na kanonzo siji baba hachasimama. Sifilani hachasimama. Uyongonyo wetu hapa Nutu ya tasimama Sasa Ia nafikia ni merimu zaidi Ujamwanyasha Atie hajui Sisi tutasimama kitete Na mdugu kalonzo musioka Kenyan Muslim leaders now want the country to cut ties with Israel and recall its envoy, citing crimes against humanity in their ongoing conflict with Hamas. Abdullahi Abdi, chairperson of the National Muslim Leaders Forum, urged Kenyans to start in solidarity with Palestinians, who he claims have borne the brunt of Israel's aggregation for the past 16 years. Muslim leaders described the Israeli raid on Gaza in retaliation for Hamas' attack as genocide against Palestinians in a statement to the media yesterday. Now, according to the leaders, despite the fact that over 2.3 million people, including women, children and the elderly, have been living in the Gaza Strip for the past 16 years with no access to any external borders, Israel has now launched an all-out raid on the Gaza Strip. This is News Dennis Dennis Asada. Good morning. One hundred two point five Spice FM, Kisumu. All right, a few minutes after eight o'clock, and we're still looking at traffic. Different parts of the city this morning is heavy in most parts, and we're looking at a heavy still coming off a of thicker super highway all the way from Gidho Rise, what we saw today, and it's bumper to bumper through and through till the CBD, literally. So that's going to take some time to get through. And we're also looking at Juja Road that started early, Kambu Road, absolute mess. I don't know what circle of traffic we're in now coming on Jogo Road, but it's quite quite something. Uh, coming on Gong Road, Langata Road, looking at coming out of Westlands on Waiaki Way. That's also very busy this morning and we're looking at going well past traffic hour with all of this. Some of the roads are slippery, so that's going to mean uh, that we're going to move a little bit slower. So let's be careful regardless. We'll talk on Spice of MKE on X and try to keep things moving as best we can. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the Situation Room. Seven the only eight. way How to you start doing? your Welcome day. To the third hour of the Situation Room. On this Monday, the 16th day of October 2023, it's another short week. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. We'll be looking forward to Friday again when it's another holiday. When you'll be here. Still. We'll be here. <laughs> That's a thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. We will still be here. Yep. But come the 26th, we'll be at Uhuru Gardens. This will actually be the 29th. 29th. Yes. Yes. 
Yeah. We'll be at the Huru Gardens. We will be taking off for the Standard Chart Nairobi Marathon that takes place on the 29th of October. We'll be taking off from Uhuru Gardens and we'll be running for the 20th edition of the Standard Chart Nairobi Marathon. Imagine it's been happening for 20 years. So this is a special one. Have you registered? If you haven't, you can do so on www.nairobimarathon.com. Register with 2,000 shillings and then get ready to run. And I know there'll be excuses. Oh, you know, I don't know. I'm traveling. Um, my cousin, brothers, sisters, I have a conference uncle. in Kisumu. Yeah. You have a conference in Kisumu? No problem. Mm. You know why? That you can take place in the marathon in Kisumu. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, we had planned a holiday. I'll be in Mombasa. It's okay. You can still run. You can still run in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. You can even run in Kakamega. Mm. In fact, all those <laughs> things, you can even decide to run early. Mm. Can you imagine? Run early, a week before, in the virtual race that will take place and you can have your numbers put on the leaderboard and find out what happens when everybody else runs on the 29th. No excuse, man. You Akuna, can do it. Mm -mm. Just mm. register today. NairobiMarathon.com 2000 Bob CT. Mm. Have you? Mm -mm. It's coming but up. I told you. Mm? you, you, you are, you, what you're doing now is you just preparing yourself for it. Bro, me, that walk is when what you're I'm ready, seeking for. And I'm going he'll, to walk. He'll register. It is those guys who say, I'll be there 30 minutes. They say, okay, which 30 minutes? He said, I didn't tell you which 30 minutes. I just said... <laughs> you, so long as I'm there and you can time my being there for 30 minutes, mm. be happy. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Prepare yourself to run. Also, CT is waiting for Kasiri to reach episode 6. Three episodes of Kasiri already aired last week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. on Maisha Magic on DSTV and, uh, and Go TV. Uh, this week, today, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, episode 4, 5, 6 of Kasiri will be airing 7.30 p.m. on Maisha Magic Plus. Again, DSTV channel 163, Go TV channel 3. CT wants to catch up with all of them. And you can actually also do that. Just dial star 423 hash to download my DSTV or my Go TV app. Subscribe, stay connected, and you can watch catch up. You can catch up with what you've missed. Okay? You can watch what you want. Uh, coming Monday, there will be Kasiri, which will be now showing episode 7, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And there will be a new one that again launches at 8.30 p.m. Called what? Zari. Sa 8.30 p.m. Zari. Monday, <coughs> Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday. Thursday, Friday. My friend, just download my DSTV or my GoTV app by darling star 423 hash. Get connected or stay connected. Today is the 16th of October 2023. You know, every day is World Something. It's International Something Day, is World Something Day. Today is a special one for food. It's World Food Day. Sikyo kukula. Ya chakula. It is not World Eating Day. <laughs> it is World Food Day. <laughs> food does not equal to eating. It, no. What does it equal? Mm, it's, it's not food. It's food. <laughs> it equals existence. It equals existence. <laughs> it's existence or an absence of existence. Exactly. <laughs> but as long as... The, we are the, discussing the, food. Okay. It's food. It's food. All right. So. Yes. We are joined in the studio by Hamisi Williams. He is from the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. He is the Assistant Kenya Representative. Good morning, Hamisi. Morning, Latif. Welcome to the hot seat of the Situation Room. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Also joining us virtually is the County Executive Committee Member for Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Cooperatives from Kakamega County, Benjamin Andama. Benjamin, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Tim. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. All the way in Kakamega. Uko mm -hmm. mbua iko namna gani? Mbua iko kwa wingi. Ina Kakamega kuna mawingi mawingi yes. Kakamega <laughs> has, has wingi, the, the only rainforest in Kenya is in Kakamega. Very true. So mm -hmm. we can imagine how much mbua there is. We'll be having that conversation but to welcome you both to a conversation this morning. CT has the day's proverb. This week's proverbs are from Rwanda. The Republic of Rwanda. Okay. Remember that story of the, the question of the population that you asked, mm. which I was doubtful about. Mm. I wasn't sure that it was 12.9 million, 13 million. Mm. It's around 13.4 million. 
13.4 million. Yes, I, I went and did Ile search. Okay. 13.4 million. Uh -huh. That's the population. Mm -hmm. okay. Very many people. And because of its landmass, it makes it a densely populated country. Brother, that thing is very, very densely populated. Okay. Very densely populated. Okay. But there are the more densely populated places in the world. Mm. Mm -hmm. But they tend to be islands. Mm. Now for the proverb. Mm -hmm. If you call a piece of wood a child, you can never use it to light a fire since it has become so precious. If you call a piece of wood a piece of wood a child, yes. you can never use it to light a fire. Yes. Because now it becomes precious. Yes. I see. Let's start with you, Benjamin. What's your interpretation of this proverb? No. I didn't get it. Probably, can you just repeat? Yes, Benjamin, I can repeat. If you call yes, a piece of wood a child, you can never use it to light a fire since it has become so precious. It's true. You can't, for sure. If you are really going to say that uh, um, we're going to use the piece of wood to make it like the fire, that cannot be. Because for sure, you really need to really have the real fire to really make it happen. Mm -hmm. Hamisi, what's your interpretation? Thanks. Uh, maybe I'm not very good at this because I'm just good at food. But uh, let's look at it this way. Maybe something <laughs> you light a fire. To so, make some, food. Something, sure. something you hold. Something you hold dearly yeah. is uh, you, you. You're not gonna throw it away. Mm. You're gonna keep it, and uh, you're gonna make good use of it. You're gonna protect it, and also protect it jealously. Mm. So, what do you think the Rwandans are saying? Are they telling us to, therefore, hold? pieces of firewood dear or are they cautioning us against doing that and why ah maybe moga was there moga could tell us this <laughs> <laughs> you know the beauty of uh, proverbs is when you ask for your interpretation you can't be wrong because that so, is your interpretation so i was right on my own you right. are right you are very very right both of you are actually very very right mm. but remember why the child comes in is the moment you humanize, you're talking about an inanimate object. A piece of wood is inanimate. Mm -hmm. The moment you animate it, then it's require, it acquires a different value. You only need to think, if you ask about a child, yeah. look at the way we name children. Mm -hmm. If a child is named after a father or mother, that child is treated very differently. Mm -hmm. Or a grandfather, simply because of the naming. And that's why they get the nicknames Babu, mm -hmm. Mami. Mm -hmm. Now, when it's his own name, then it's just Toto. <laughs> oh boy. boy. <laughs> Let's get into the conversation. Today is World Food Day. Hamisi, what does that mean? Where did this originate from? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, as you had uh, indicated, uh, uh, maybe every day, each day is, is World Something Day. Mm. But uh, for us in the food and nutrition security sector, this is a very special day for us. And uh, just to put it into context is that uh, I work with the Food and Agriculture Organization, which is the lead UN agency that is in charge of ensuring that uh, we have the world without hunger and uh, people have bread on their table. And uh, so two critical significant for this day. One is the birthday of the of FAO mm. itself as an organization. As the day that FAO actually was made a special agency of the United Nations. Uh, secondly, because of the role of the agency, uh, the World Food Day is marked to create awareness. And I think that's something that uh, we need to really clarify to the public. Mm. It's not like we're providing food that day, that is not the day for people to eat. But it is a day that is marked to create awareness in terms of uh, where are we with the matters food and nutrition security? Yeah. What are the challenges that we are facing? And what needs to be done to address the same? Yeah. We mark it every year on 16th of October. And in Kenya, we've been doing this for the last 47 or so years that FAO has been around. Yeah. Last year, we marked it uh, at uh, Loitoktok in mm. Kajiado County, and this was actually presided over by the deputy president. Mm. 
uh, this year we will be marking it in Kakamega County and uh, we've invited guests as well. We are working to, we work together with the Ministry of Agriculture when mm. organizing the World Food Day always. Mm. I only need to also probably say that uh, for this year it's being marked with a difference Eric. Mm. Uh, that is because of um, the food the World Food uh, Security Trends uh, FAO had uh, relooked at the whole situation differently mm. and uh, decided that uh, there would be along just celebrating on creating awareness of matters food and nutrition security we're gonna have countries also going into some specifics checking on what exactly would they be able to invest in that can help countries to address matters of food and nutrition security and uh, for that matter today 16th uh, uh, FAO is holding a global conference in Rome uh, that is investment world investment forum mm -hmm. Kenya is actually represented at a very high level uh, in that particular forum uh, we worked with together with the ministry to come up with uh, uh, specific areas of investment we drilled down to particular one which we thought that uh, maybe if we focus on this and get invest attract investment on it then we'll be able to address some level of food and nutrition security so yes it's about awareness mm. and uh, showing people where we are what needs to be done so that we take next steps thank you we've been having a conversation about food security in the country for a while you know with all the cycles of uh, coming out of a prolonged drought situation um looking at our reduced yields in our farms because of various factors is kenya food secure and what would you use to gauge your answer starting with you and then we'll go to waziri in kakamega yeah good question uh, let, let me uh, first give you uh, some statistics mm. just a quick one i'll just pick a few of it and that, that that will really help us to you know to globalize this conversation okay because what happens in Kenya affects what happens in our neighbors and what happens there affects us as well. Yeah. So probably we need to uh, really look at it in, in, in that manner. You know, um, some statistics say that uh, by between 2019 and 2022, we got uh, the population that were food insecure increasing from about 690 million to about 780 million globally, globally. Mm -hmm. and we got this severe insecurity population or numbers increasing from about 25 percent to 29 percent that means that you added about 180 million uh, numbers into the severe food insecure uh, population so why is the period 2019 2022 critical and i actually specifically went for that and i wanted to share that mm. that's because if you look at the trends from 1990 to about 2015 and thereabout mm. we had actually made some gains actually reduced the world global hunger index by about 10 percent mm. but now we got a situation that uh, was is deteriorating mm. so the question is why before i come to just the specifics of is kenya food secure or not mm. That is the period we had uh, the COVID-19 mm. that disrupted, you know, the trends, uh, productions, and, and a lot of things that went wrong just with that. And I don't want to go into that story. Mm. Again, uh, in that particular moment, you got quite a lot of, a uh, little bit of rapid uh, urbanization that is happening. And then uh, you got uh, a lot of competition uh, in terms of the population, uh, then uh, you 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 had issues of climate change. Mm. We've seen a very intense uh, kind of climate change disruptions that happen and have very serious consequences in the manner we produce food, the manner we process food, and the manner we utilize food itself. Mm. And that's I'm talking at a disruption that has taken a systemic approach from what we call farm. To fork mm. yeah so all the way you got every aspect disrupted 
Now, when you have all those factors combined together, they compromise your ability to have food that is available, affordable, and quality. So these are the measures that you need to look at. And then when you look at it, then you'll say, we are in a state that is not very good. Mm. It's not very, very secure state. Within the population, you have a number that could be doing well, some whatever, but you're looking at what number lives below uh, the $1 index, $1.25 index. That is on extreme poverty. The number that lives below 2.15 index, that is poverty. So if you look at that, and you can make your guess. Waziri, let's come to you then. In Kakamega, in a conversation that we've been having, Kakamega is one of those counties around there that are considered to be food baskets of the country and all. How are you doing in terms of food security for the population in Kakamega? Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And uh, in this discussion, very important discussion, World Food Day, um, being celebrated every 16th of October every year. And I would want also to put voice, just the way my colleague uh, William Amis have just talked about. Um, as a county, we are so privileged that this year, we are going to host the World Food Day uh, celebration, the climax of it on 26th of uh, this month. And we want to welcome everyone else in this particular undertaking. So for that reason, as a county, and since we got into um, um, government, that is since last year, within our the county manifesto and the government of Fernandez Barraza. One of the key pillars is on food security. And uh, as you just put it, Kakamega is being seen or is coming up as one of the food basket of Kenya, and I believe also for the region. There are a number of activities that we've engaged in that really look at food security as a really important aspect within our populace. So for that reason, uh, for this financial year that's ended, and we're happy that this has happened, we've had an issue because our farmers were never using fertilizer and seed, the certified seeds and fertilizer much as expected. But as a county, through the cabinet and through the leadership of our governor, we gave out subsidized fertilizer and seeds uh, worth over 700 million Kenya shillings. And as we're talking today, we've really improved on production from the five, six bags we used to get before. And now we're talking of around 15 bags per acre. And in this season, as you all know, the issue of food has been very, very much talked about here and there. And as you know, we've also come down from a very severe drought. As a county, this is an area we've really worked hard in terms of maize production. And this year, we've really, I would say, we're really expecting and putting together a bumper harvest that has just come up. And this does not only happen with our county subsidized fertilizer, we also received the government uh, fertilizer that also assisted a lot in terms of production. So we are really working towards making sure, for sure, Kakamega as a county is a food secure, and if possible, also if you can also have surplus. So when we look at some of the issues concerning food, obviously, um, for you, Hamisi, and you talk about, you know, uh, working on this index, whether it was a, at a global stage and we can then bring that and localize that conversation to Kenya, for example. And we talk of some of the things that are needed to be done to ensure that there is food being grown, there is food being grown, produced, there is food being consumed and there is food being stored to make sure that at any one time an equilibrium is maintained to then say that Kenya is food secure. Now, what are some of those activities that will ensure some of these processes that we speak of? Thank you. Critical question. But, and and but by the way, um, we, we needed to. I needed to clarify also that every year, mm. within 
the World Food Days. Mm. Look at what is critical for that year to support this agenda mm -hmm. and the awareness. Mm -hmm. And in particular, this year has been deemed water is life, water is food, leave no one behind. I want to use that to address uh, his question. I mean, her question. Mm. Yeah. So, but what what specifically this year is looking at is let's create awareness that uh, our life is built around food. And uh, our food is built around water. And therefore, water is life, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. So one of the critical things to answer your question is that we're going to have to make sure that we harness water well and we use water well because it's really a critical component of producing our food. And it's been said several times that uh, you know, we, we, on this side of the world, we rely so much on, you know, rain-fed agriculture. Mm. We still do agriculture like it's, it's a way of life, you know. We wake up and go to the farm when it is time. We come back, we wait for nature to take its course. Mm -hmm. This is not how to do agriculture anymore. Why? Because a lot of things have happened here. The space that you had before has reduced Tremendously because of the population. Mm -hmm. So you can no longer have the laxity to just play around with the space you have. And therefore that calls for technology. That calls for new way of doing things. I, actually, um, I, I, I look at it when, 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 when I discuss the numbers and the population and the size we have. In the United States, for example, 2% of that population is the only one involved in agricultural production. And they feed over 400 million and export it. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, we are now going through a very massive farmer registration exercise, which FAO is supporting the government to do. Mm. Already we are heading to seven so million farmers that are going to be in that register. But they're not able to feed the population. Mm. So you find a trend where in the developed world, or where agriculture has taken shape properly, the farm sizes are increasing and the number of farmers are decreasing. In the situation like in Kenya, the farm sizes are decreasing and the number of farmers are increasing. Are the farmers increasing? Seriously. And okay. I'll, I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. Because the farmers, in terms of what do you want to define as the farmer? You got this say, with the five acres yep. 10 years ago, uh, got five sons, everyone got one acre each. Mm. Uh, that's about f uh, three years ago. Mm -hmm. All the sons went to some level of uh, subsistence agriculture somehow in their one acre. Mm. The sons will give birth to two sons also. They will divide the one acre. You get the point. Yep. And all of them masquerade like they're doing some farming around there. <laughs> and that's what you get. Yes, yeah, so some of these things So also farmers, if you define farmers as somebody who is involved in some form of agricultural no, activity, farmers, yes, they're, they're, the they're, farmers doing, are they're doing some level of production anyway. Okay. So, but uh, these are small holders. Yeah. So we, we can also go into that and see what are the merits and demerits of having them. Hmm. Which are also some of the things that we have. But the second thing I wanted to to, to, to come to why I brought that issue mm. are also the matters of policies, the regulations. What are the frameworks that guide us around these areas of the farm sizes, mm. agriculture land? What are the frameworks that guide us that tell us that we are not supposed to probably produce buildings instead of food, food itself? Mm. So th these are things that we need to have and put in place. And then I talked about technology and I can go long, uh, on and on about that one because mm. to me that is very critical. We can no longer uh, do our agriculture the way we used to do it before, 20, 30 years ago, and think that we are going to change it. Mm. Because of the decreased size, uh, weather changes and everything, we need to go into precise technologies that will help us to produce more with less. Mm. More with less land, more with less investment more with less labor. That's the only way we're going to increase our food because the, the size of our land is basically not increasing. It's shrinking. Yes. You know, and for many times when people think about um, using technology, people think mechanization. 
And mechanization is often, because we are looking at now, for example, in the case of America, mechanization comes with large parcels of land. So you will have to tell us how this technology would work with reducing parcels of land and how then we can be more efficient in, in farming. But let's take a break. We're having a conversation this World Food Day with two gentlemen. One of them is Hamisi Williams. He's in the studio. He is with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. He is Assistant Kenya Representative for the Kenya Program. Benjamin Andama is the County Executive Committee Member for Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Cooperatives, joining us live from Kakamega where he serves in the Kakamega County Government. Keep it here. This year's commemorations are taking place in Kakamega. The theme is Water is Life, Water is Food, Leave No One Behind. Back shortly. This, this is The Situation Room, the only way to start your day. If a lion shows you its teeth, it doesn't mean it likes you. <laughs> it doesn't mean it likes you. Mm. It won't start. <laughs> <laughs> A liar calls as witness one who is either dead or far away. Say it in this way. Ben Low, Nin Inter, Yenin Ter, Ayu Markati Kadikta. You know, this is a character called a liar. He has disturbed people. Mm -hmm. So when you tell him, uh, who are your witnesses? He will take you to a place where it is difficult to verify. For someone like me who sweats uh, a lot, <laughs> I cannot survive there. <laughs> you know, sweating is biblical. Good. <laughs> and he must blame it on Adam, not me. You know, because <laughs> Adam messed up and, uh, and, and he was told, now you fellow, you, by the sweat of your brow, oh, yes. <laughs> thou shall eat. <laughs> the Situation Room, Kenya's biggest conversation. Still a high chance of rain in Nairobi. It's 18 degrees, highs of 25, and we'll see highs of 24 in a cloudy in Akuru at 17. It's 18 and cloudy in Yeri with highs of 24 and 18 and cloudy in Eldoret, going to highs of 24 as well. Partly sunny conditions at 26 in Mombasa and at 28. Melindi is mostly sunny. 21 and cloudy in Kisumu, highs of 29 and 27 will be the high in a mostly cloudy Kakamega at 21. It's cloudy in Kampala at 20, highs of 26 and we'll see highs of 32 in a partly sunny Dar es Salaam. At 12, it's partly sunny in Johannesburg with highs of 19 with severe thunder thunderstorms still through the rest of Monday. Mostly clear at 25 in Lagos and mostly sunny at 23 in Kinshasa. up your life. All right, so still looking at a pretty tricky Monday morning where there's traffic basically in all pockets that you look at today. On the thicker superhighway, it's been heavy for an hour now, and we're still looking at heavy traffic on Kambu Road as well. That looks like it'll continue for some time, bumper to bumper through and through. On Limuru Road, coming in from uh, Kitisuru from Ruaka and then coming in from United Nations Avenue, that all comes towards Limuru Road. You'll split then going towards Wangari Mavai. Onto Chiromo at some point, you should be all right. Peponi is also quite packed, uh, coming in through towards Westlands. And we'll see traffic coming on Huru Highway through into the CBD and then out towards Westlands. It's busy on James uh, Gishuru as we look at that spilling towards Waiakiwe. So, yes, yeah, still in traffic hour. Let us know if something does jump out at you. And we can see how we can spread the word, let people know, or shoot you off in a different direction. Let's talk on Spice FM KE on X. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done. All right, the conversation. 94.4. Nine, Kenya's biggest conversation. We have with us joining us online is Benjamin Ndama, the CCM for Agriculture, Livestock, Fisheries and Cooperatives in Kakamega County. Hamis Williams is the Assistant Kenya Representative for the Food and Agriculture Organization. It's World Food Day. The theme is Water is Life, Water is Food. Leave no one behind, City. I'd like to ask Waziri. Waziri, would you say that the productivity, farm productivity of Kakamega County is sufficient to feed all its people. Thank you. Um, first, I must say that uh, when we were starting on, there were a number of factors. Of course, you remember 
we've had a poverty index of uh, around 31%. Um, and this has been reduced from 50% that was in 2013, when uh, poverty level was very high, when actually the issue of uh, farm, or rather the issue of farm input um, subsidy came into being. And as we are talking today, this has been really significant, really come down because of the way we've really embraced. And uh, since we came in into government, this was one of the things that uh, we were moving around during our campaigns, telling and talking about how food productivity and food security is very important. And as I said before, the aspect of food productivity in Kakamega County, as we are talking today, a number of factors and a number of things have really happened that have really, to some extent, we are still on the road. We've not really gotten to our dream. And this is one of the things, if you ask me now, where as a county at some point, my, the population was only having food once in a day. And we used to call it in our mother tongue, Savalala, mm. meaning wash your hands once. Mm. <laughs> and uh, that really uh, brought us very much down and the poverty and, of course, the issues of malnutrition and the like were really seen across. But as we talk today, majority of the population or households and the small scale farmers that we have around, the productivity are really improved, not only on maize production. This has also happened because um, we are now one of the counties within the country that are doing a lot of fish farming, which have really taken on where we are really drilling a lot of fish ponds across the county. And these are really improved in terms of nutrition and, of course, providing opportunities for our youth and even for our young population. So the issue of productivity, we are really approaching it in different angles. And as I just said it, another aspect that I believe is also helping us really get to food productivity, like the increase that we're having, is the issue of extension. And this one, we must really be thankful to the FAO for the exercise that have just happened where we've just registered our farmers across the county. We are talking of almost 300 farmers, 300,000 farmers <coughs> have been registered. This is the kind of data we didn't have to really know and even measure and know whether we are really improving or not. So this kind of data that we just received, we are now cleaning it up, which has been a very big initiative and a plan for us to know exactly who are the farmers doing crop farming, the ones who are doing uh, fisheries, the ones who are doing dairy and the like. So with this kind of data, of course, we are still yet really cleaning and putting it up would really help us to know exact numbers and exact movement in terms of our productivity. Waziri, you mentioned something very interesting and uh, talking about the fact that people look at productivity and you've actually been able to see going into other sources of production that were not uh, necessarily traditional. Um, we're looking at the country at large being heavily maize dependent and the conversation has often come up at looking at alternate sources of sustenance. Would this be an avenue through which new or, I guess, non-ordinary sources of food then can come into the conversation for production that could then provide a source of food for people around the country? If you see that it works with fish farming, uh, that would, was not necessarily something that was traditional to a certain people, can you then look at other sources so that at times when a source like maize is depressed, that there's something else to lean on. Is there space for that kind of conversation today? Yeah. I think that's really important because as it is now, if you look at uh, culturally here in Kakamega, and basically this is almost becoming a national thing, where maize or rather ugali is becoming like, if you don't feed on it, it's like you've not fed on anything. Mm. So I think to me even the change of mind and the way we look at food it's time now, even with the kind of changes and the climate change that we even have today, we need to look at other alternative sources and ways that uh, we can really produce food. And as I've just said it before, the issue of food, uh, fish production, this wasn't really uh, a thing that even was happening within us. We were really looking at fish coming from the lakes and from the ocean and the like, but now Kakamega County is really taking fish farming as one of real, real, real things that's really happening across. And uh, for information, even in the last two, three months, Kakamega was considered as an area where fish production is really getting on and uh, really surpassing, almost surpassing, really even some of the fish farming that's happening in the lakes. So for us, that's an alternative. However, we're also looking at ways on how we can really look at our traditional food that we used to even to grow in the, in the, in the early 90s or even the 80s 
for example, the issue of, uh, of cassava and potatoes. And looking at that, because it's just a way of how we look at food. So to me, as we are even celebrating the World Food Day now, we're looking at alternative food, and that's what can be really be put on the table, as opposed to really over dependence on maize, and looking at maize as the only food. Mm. For us here, yes, it is. But however, I think it's a mindset, and this is one thing I believe we can really take to higher levels, and even share across, and look at it also in different forms. For us, in our CIDP for this financial year, we're looking at how can we promote um, sweet potatoes and the cassava within our catchment areas. If I may ask, the, this is to you, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> There's always this conversation we hear from food experts and people who work for international organizations such as the one you work for about this over-dependence on maize. But th- that narrative isn't entirely true. Because traditionally, literally every community in this country had a diversity of foods. If you're talking about starches, they had them. So are we talking about having lost ground to something that we previously had? Or we are saying that farming ceased to be what it was because subsistence farming in this country for the longest time meant the farmer could feed himself and his family. So are we saying that that is no longer the case, that they can't feed? I know because anyone who grew up in the era that I grew up in grew up in the rural areas predominantly. And farming was just the way of life. And the truth of the matter was those subsistence farmers traditionally even understood crop rotation. They knew what to plant, when and how. All these things we talk about as though it's being reinvented existed. So as they ask in modern technology, where was the plot lost? <laughs> okay, good. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll combine that with what you, you said earlier before we went to the break mm. about technology and mechanization. And uh, let's 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 say that um, maize, when it was introduced, uh, there were good intentions. This was a much palatable crop. It was growing faster. Three months you had your your, your harvest, and uh, I think because of palatability, if you grew up in the village, people actually moved from things like sorghum and started consuming maize. It was a good crop because you could use it for breakfast, you use it for lunch, you use it for whatever. These were some of the advantages. Actually, the advantages of maize are so, so many. Except that it comes also with a lot of other things like demand on water uh, to grow maize. Uh, so this is why we talk of let's get crops that are water resistant, a, a bit of drought tolerant kind of, which were there before. An unfortunate situation, Muga, is that we now had maize, but that was also when climate change also started beating us. So our maybe water reliance levels were becoming a bit shaky, especially of the the, 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 uh, the natural rain fed. Mm. And then this crop requires a lot of it, for instance. So the little failure or depressed rains, then you, you, you start having challenges with your harvest. And that's why there is all this conversation, like, Either we get the varieties, and actually I agree with you, probably we do not need to concentrate so much in changing maize. Mm. But we could also make the best out of that situation. There are technologies that do that. Countries have really survived on the same. A country has to really determine what is my staple food mm. and has to deal with the staple food. But as we do that, we also say we need what we call a crop master plan that will be able to tell us in this area this is what you need in this area this is what can grow in this area under the circumstances including look at the soils themselves mm. and livestock in the ministry of agriculture actually livestock is now undergoing through the same process that process they are coming up with what you call livestock master plan and we are working together with them so that we know what type of livestock breed do you keep where this will help a great deal so that's something that we need to look into it's not like we need a change 360 degrees something we can make the best out of it. And I want to use that now to address your issue of mechanization and technology. And what exactly is this? And does it mean we need to the big machines and everything else? Mm. You know, um, let me state here clearly that there's nothing wrong with smallholder farming. Nothing. It's what you have and it is what it is. Mm. But we can do something about it. We can make it better. What are we ma- how do we do that? We must innovate when you know you have a challenge 
you must innovate you know so we look at technologies even machines themselves there are those machines that can work in a one acre or to half an acre depending what crop are you growing there mm. there are systems of irrigation that can be used even in the kitchen gardens and be able to produce vegetables mm. there are those ways and technologies through which we can dry vegetables and make them last longer mm. even for export so there are so many technologies that we can be able to use and apply and it doesn't mean we have to do the big machineries of 100 acres and so mm. if we don't have it we can make the best of what we have ha, and the good news just one minute mm. the good news is that these technologies are available for instance you, you're asking for examples and I'll give you a few mm. the, 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 the the greenhouse technology is here with us you walk to some of these areas here around Kitengela you'll find that working big time mm. and those are very dry areas you use less water the drip irrigation i was walking some areas around kajiado there mm. and you find people have done maize and the drip irrigation mm. yes so the only challenge probably that comes there will be what is the investment that is required the initial investment and i have to, to also talk about that and this is where also back to the policies that we have how do we bring in the agriculture equipments and materials that are required in this country how do we um, uh, encourage the domestic production of those equipments mm. and materials that are required maybe drip lines and things like that mm. are we able to produce them here so that we don't rely on exports i mean imports yeah so that then the farmers can get them can if we talk of just one more minute mm. if we talk about water like today we talk of water 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 there is something as simple as water harvesting go to your rural place now every typical rural village you'll find some kamabati structure somewhere mm. But that my body structure lacks the gutter it lacks the tank if that person go to the gutter and got the tank they would do some kitchen garden somewhere this is the level we can go mm. but do you know why they can't do it try to buy the gutter today one is 1800 shillings a kenyan living under 1.5 dollars us dollars is not able to do this they will be looking at something else to do with that money so those roofs are there they are not harvesting water at all and so when it rains that water goes off just like that and we lose there so we just have very many losses i want to ask you again about the policy because you said i mean it's our policies that we have in place and all we have a food and nutrition security policy just was it a year or two years ago the ministry of agriculture launched and i'm sure the fao was involved in this in the agricultural sector transformation and growth strategy yep Are you saying all those things don't contain what we're talking about? No, and no, if no. they do, then why aren't we seeing a change and a shift? They do. And they have all this. I actually was involved even in the SDGs itself, okay. in the initiation. So on paper we have everything we're talking about is on paper. Is it in practice? That 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 that's what you are saying and that's not what I'm saying. And what I'm saying is we already have aligned this. There's only you have to start from somewhere. Mm-hmm. And actually the ministry just launched the SDGs you're talking about 2 years ago. You're going to have to take time. This is a 10 year strategy for you to start seeing it rolling. Right. One of the things they're doing now, like including the farmer registration, this is looking and focusing on the small holder. Is actually coming from that particular document. And for the first time Kenya has become bold enough to say we must register every farmer. That's where you start mm-hmm. when you want to deal with these farmers to know who is farming and farming what, where. You got the point. Mm. That is actually coming from that strategy itself. I don't understand why 10 years. Is it 10 years to realize the the, the results or 10 years to start implementing? No, 10 10 years you 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 look at it to you 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 progress the implementation. So that's why it goes 10 years. Mm. And it will also mean after 10 years you know you love also another kind of um, you know things will have changed also. Yep. So you're going to have to relook you at your strategy it. again. And that's why policies really are always dynamic they, they can't be static so mm. they keep on changing that's why it's a five year four years 10 years or whatever it is mm. for instance in agriculture sector you can't have like you may be a vision of a year that, that will require really at a very why you know not? basic level yeah but why if, not if you want to look at the mm. national strategy 
you want to have them at different levels because there are things you can implement within a month and get your results. There are things you will do within a year. There are things you'll do within five years and 10 years as you go. So you're going to have to take care of both, all of them. And that's what I was saying. For instance, in that particular policy, there are actually nine thematic areas in that policy, flagships mm. in that policy itself. Mm. And started with the immediate ones, the low-hanging fruits, like, first of all, let's know who is our farmer in this country. And that's already being rolled out by the government. Mm. Yeah, it's working. We're okay. supporting that together with the World Bank. Can I ask Waziri a question here? Um, and this is one of the things that we speak about uh, water, 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 right? Because I think that's premised around what we speak of today. We've come out, Kenya, well, and maybe still dealing with the last bits of a very, very severe drought. And we know that following severe drought will come severe rains. It's just the cycle and how it works. Um, maybe we've seen the onset of this now. And when we then talk about the preservation of water, I can understand policies are necessary to have some of these things done. But what kinds of things are we looking at? Because if we're talking about water harvesting, for example, at a national level, I don't know that anything has been done to make sure that folks that we're speaking about who cannot afford a gutter of 1,800 shillings, then maybe would be able to afford it. So if you look at the smallholder farmer, what can be done or what is being done? If you even take Akameka County as an example, to make sure that water harvesting at that level becomes something that is a practice as a result of policy. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think um, I agree with my, my colleague uh, from the FAO, but for us as a county, the issue of uh, water, and as you just put it, and uh, of course, we have homes with those gutters here and there, but some cannot really afford it, and even if they have a gutter, they might not have the tank to really store even the very water. So if we really look at uh, our county generally, the issue of water harvesting, and probably even looking at alternative ways of water conservation, and uh, as it is for now, majority of our farmers are waiting for the rains or rain fed as a real main, main, main area of our production. And if for sure, we are really to really look at this in the best way possible as a county because most of our farmers are subsistence farmers with not very big land as such. Of course, we have some two counties, sub-counties that has bigger land but the uh, majority of our sub-counties have smaller pieces of land. So the issue of water conservation and really looking at that and looking at the farmers, to me I'm looking at this as a very important aspect. And of course these are some of the challenges and ways we are looking ahead as a county on how we can really conserve the water because there's a lot of water running, especially now that it's raining. And probably we are looking at our irrigation department in terms of even having the water pans here and there so that in one way or the other, when there's no rain at all, we can still utilize the same water for our irrigation. However, one thing we're also looking at is the question of the issue of climate change and how we can really look at the issue of drought and how we can really conserve our water when it's really with us and see how best we can really do the same. We are looking at even some kind of crops or plants that don't really need a lot of water for that matter, as opposed to the plants that really need a lot of water across the year that can really still provide food security for our county. But then, Waziri, so are you supporting all the homeowners in water harvesting? I guess that's more directly what Ndu is asking. What are you doing as a county to make sure that all the rain that is raining now is not going to waste? Thanks for that question. We are not really, it's not really sort of as, as it is, but I think what major thing we are doing, we are just creating awareness. And we are hoping through awareness and through our public, but rather than the like, just letting them know the importance and why it is important to really do the water conservation. But I believe even as a county, this is an area we need to really invest more in terms of, uh, I would say, um, public awareness and making sure that we really know why, because this is something that we does. And the question is how we really need to really do that in the long run. For now, we are not really supporting directly. From my understanding, uh, agriculture is a devolved function. There's yeah. a, a simple way of conserving water 
uh, through water pans. Simple. It's something that all you mm-hmm. need is equipment to sort of like dig the earth and make sure that water heads in that direction. As mm-hmm. you go with the sensitization, perhaps you could look to into community activities that could help put these things, because with these rains, that would be a mm-hmm. great help. Sure, sure. All right, Waziri, as we conclude the conversation, the World Food Day commemorations are being hosted by Kakamega County this year. What are you doing? Thank you so much. Um, we are out there doing the all we can with the water, with the World Food Day coming to Kakamega. Yep. And uh, this is coming up. And we are working with the community at large. Mm-hmm. We are inviting everyone else to really join us on the 26th of October. And this is going to happen in Buhungu. Mm-hmm. Uh, Buhungu, not Buhungu really, but at Bukura. Bukura ATC. Yep. And we are inviting everybody uh, across the region. So we put plans in place whereby we are expecting the head of state, that is the president, to really grace the occasion. He's in and we are looking at the... Pardon? He's in China. Yeah, but that's happening on 26th. Okay. He'll be back. We are having the real day on 26th. <laughs> that's been pushed 26th. <laughs> <laughs> it's not happening. Of course, 2016 today, it's happening elsewhere. <laughs> but for us, it's happening on 26th okay. of this month. And we're expecting the president and the, the entire partners. And of course, our governor is really out in preparations. And okay. we are looking forward to to host the whole nation here in Kakamega. Waziri, thank you very much for joining us. Waziri Benjamin Ndama, CECM for Agriculture in Kakamega County. And Hamisi Williams from the Food and Agriculture Organization is the Assistant Kenya Representative for our program commemorating World Food Day. Uh, Hamisi, thank you for joining us. Come again soon. Thank you and welcome. <coughs> Keep it here for more conversations coming up in the next hour in the Situation Room. Good morning, it's 9 o'clock. Spice up your life. Good morning, this is Newswire Dennis Aseto. Prime Cabinet Secretary and Cabinet Secretary for Foreign Affairs Musali Mudavadi and National Security Advisor Monica Juba are scheduled to leave for Haiti for a second assessment mission. The team is set to meet the Haitian authorities and sign various agreements ahead of the planned deployment of Kenya police to combat gangs in the Caribbean nation. This as the National Assembly is this week expected to debate the government's plan to send a thousand police officers to Haiti to restore order. The majority leader in the National Assembly, Kimani Shungwa, has said that the MPs will consider all the issues raised by Kenyans regarding the plan during the sessions to discuss the bill. These as Interior Cabinet Secretary Kithure Kendikia said that the deployment of officers to Haiti will not co- cost the taxpayers a dime as the exercise will be spearheaded by the United Nations, further exuding hope that Kenyan officers will deliver on their mandate. Meanwhile, Deputy President Rigat Gashagwa has called upon Parliament to debate the issue when it goes to the House and give the deployment a green light as it elevates Kenya's position globally. Mambo ya kupeleka askari yetu haiti wa polisi ni kitu ya maana sana ya kwamba polisi wetu wa Kenya wametambuliwa ya kwamba ni officers who are professional ambaye wanaweza kuaminika kwenda kusaidia wenzao katika dunia. So tunauliza bunge tafadhali leader of majority mutusaidie the Senate committee that is investigating the Shakahola death will today visit Pastor Ezekiel Odero's new life prayer center and church in Mavueni, Kilifi County as part of their probe. The 11-member ADA committee chaired by Tenariva Senator Danson Mangatana is expected in Mavueni any time from now. The team is investigating the proliferation of religious sects and also inquiring into the Shakahola deaths. The Ministry of Health now says it is all systems go for the launch of the universal health coverage this week in Kericho. The UHC program will see Kenyans from all walks of life access affordable health care. The program to be launched on the 20th of October, that is, but an academic day, is aimed at improving access to 
primary health care across the country. The program will be anchored under the four health bills that are expected to be passed ahead of the launch. The laws will determine the cost of the program to the taxpayers in the new dispensation that will see the scrapping of the NHIF and the introduction of Social Health Insurance Fund N. SHIF. Now, a policewoman from Administration Police Service has been arrested on allegations of shooting and killing her husband during a domestic dispute on the outskirts of Eldoret Town. The officer, a mother of three, had been on duty at the Kenya Bureau of Standards before returning home in the early hours Sunday morning with her service firearm. Witnesses reported hearing a heated argument between the couple before gunshots rang out, prompting neighbors to flee for their safety. The policewoman allegedly fired more than 12 bullets inside their home, killing her husband. Internationally, and one of Iran's most prominent film directors, Darish Merjui, has been found dead alongside his wife, the 83-year-old, and Vahinda Mohammadi Far, were found with stab injuries in their home near the capital, Tehran. According to Iranian authorities, Merjui was considered one of the founders of Iranian new wave cinema. Four people have been identified in connection to the deaths, according to local reports. And Pope Francis has called for humanitarian corridors to allow the delivery of essentials to the Gaza Strip, which is under heavy Israeli bombardment following a bloody attack by its rulers Hamas. Alam has grown about a humanitarian crisis in Gaza where Israel has cut off water, food and power, vowing to maintain the complete siege until all hostages taken by the Palestinian Islamist militant are freed. In the eight days since Hamas gunmen killed more than 1,300 Israelis in the surprise onslaught, Israel has responded with a devastating bombing campaign that has claimed over 2,300 lives in Gaza. And TikTok has said it immediately took action to counter misinformation after the European Union warned the platform following the attack by Hamas on Israel. The EU called on TikTok boss Shu Zichu to urgently step up efforts and spell out within 24 hours it was complying with European law on Friday. Social media firms have seen a surge of misinformation about the conflict like doctored images and mislabeled videos. And Iran has warned that any Israeli ground offensive in the Gaza Strip could expand the scope of the conflict elsewhere in the Middle East. Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdelahmin held talks with Qatar's Emir Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani as the Israeli troops massed on the border with Gaza. This is News. I'm Dennis Asada. Good morning. Four point four Spice FM, Nairobi. It's after nine o'clock and traffic still kind of heavy on the thicker superhighway this morning. Actually, not kind of quite. And you're coming all the way from the Outer Ring Junction and well beyond that. GSU headquarters. Then heading into that junction from from Ruaraka is actually busy still. Limuru Road is busy, as is United Nations Avenue. Then everybody's going to come in and try to uh, get into the CBD, congregate on Wangari Mavai Way, and then head out towards Chiromo in that other direction. It's also busy on James Gishiro, touching on Waiakue. A little bit here and there still continues. Okay, into the CBD is where we see the most of it this morning. Langata Road not looking too bad. Uh... Railo Dingo Way then going towards Ngong Road is fine as well. Lunga Lunga, Lusaka and Likoni are pretty busy right about now. We're going to keep an eye on things coming out of traffic hour in about half hour or so. Let's talk on Spice of MKE on X. Still trying to keep things moving this dreary Monday morning. This is The Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, Controversial. In the room, we have C.T. Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth. 
Kenyan by choice, communications expert, Pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power, and Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is The Situation Room, the only way to start yes, your indeed. day. Coming up to the final hour of The Situation Room this morning, it's seven minutes after nine. Ndu, mm-hmm. if someone wants to catch up with a show on Maisha Magic Plus on DSTV, mm. or they even have Go TV, what do they do? What you do, mm. first you need to make sure that you have the platform, mm. right? So you can then subscribe to DSTV mm. or Go TV, all right? Mm-hmm. Then you have your remote and all your gadgets in place, and then you... Find channel 163 mm. on DSTV or you find channel 3 on Go TV, mm. and then you can start to watch programs like Kasiri, mm-hmm. which, for example, there's another episode um, that is pr- uh, dropping tonight, mm-hmm. and you can actually uh, premiere tonight at 7 30. It's on Maisha Magic Plus on DSTV uh, channel 163. Kasiri premiered last week, actually. Yes, so you have another episode. We have. Yes, yeah, episode dropping four. Tonight. Dropping tonight, mm-hmm. right? And you can also watch other th- programs that premiere. You were telling us about another one. Mm. It's a new series called Zari, which starts on the 23rd, Monday to Friday from 8.30 p.m. So there's a program at 7.30 p.m. And then an hour later, there's another one at 8.30 p.m. Imagine. So you can imagine all these wonderful things that you can watch Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 163 on DSTV, 3 on GoTV. I mean, what more could you want? I, 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 you don't even know. I, Just let I, it go. I, it's surely, it's I mean, like, like world for choice. There you go. Like, like really, like. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> and you can catch up but just by downloading the apps, my DSTV or my Go TV. Four two star four two three, hash. So now let's talk about imposters, impersonators, fraudsters, and fake people, and, <laughs> and all those, if they say to be learned. <laughs> and they are in the bar instead of on the bar. <laughs> <laughs> We're joined by two lawyers. Uh, one of them is uh, Peter Wanyama. He's an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. And the other one is also an, an advocate of the High Court of Kenya, Manua Hosea. Manua is also the founding chairperson of the Young Bar Association. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, Eric. Good to have you on the show. Welcome to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. We are going to talk about uh, you, whether you are actually first on the role of advocates and you have to prove to us before we even call you lawyers. The way things are, (laughs) how do we know who's a real one, who is not? But welcome. City has the day's proverbs. City's proverbs this week are from Rwanda. Yes, Mm. uh, proverbs for the whole of this week will be from Rwanda. If you call a piece of wood a child, you can never use it to light a fire since it has become so precious. If you call a piece of wood a child, you can never use it to light a fire since it has become precious. Mm. Wakili Wanyama, what do you, in, how do you interpret this proverb? Uh, I'm not a proverbs person, mm. but uh, it's really about relevance. Eh? Uh, and that's how I see it. Eh? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about relevance. And situating us, uh, it in the context of the legal profession. Eh? Yeah. You know, the if you're a fake advocate, eh? mm. uh, no matter how they call you outside there, uh, the perception, you remain a fake advocate. Come on, you're when you not kuni, in the room. You kuni, you kuni. <laughs> <laughs> Jose, what's your interpretation? I think for me, uh, and, and I don't think uh, I'll, I'll, it's different from what uh, Senior Onyama stated. Mm. Uh, the, the the proverb basically means that you cannot change what you are, mm. whether you you're pampered, whether you're you're, you're structured in a different way, mm. you'll still remain a firewood. You'll mm. still remain a Peter Onyama. You'll still remain a fake lawyer. Mm. Yes. Wait, wait. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we change the way you just said things. You'll still remain Peter and you'll still remain a fake lawyer. Suddenly, I'm not a fake lawyer. 
<laughs> you know, senior Peter Onyama, his reputation precedes him. Mm-hmm. So his name alone means he's an advocate of uh, serious repute. Mm. Yeah. And so I, I don't need to explain that uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a lawyer in the first place or a senior lawyer in that matter. Okay. Yes. If you say so. Yeah. so anyway, mm. who's a lawyer, who's an advocate, Peter? Uh, in our context, mm. uh, a lawyer is a, a person uh, who has an LLB degree. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then specific to our jurisdiction, even, though, even, even if you go to other jurisdictions, eh, mm. you'll find that a lawyer is someone who is qualified. Eh? Mm. Uh, but f- for legal purposes, a lawyer, uh, a lawyer, if you have an LLB degree and you, you not, you, you're not admitted to the bar, uh, you can become a journalist, mm. uh, you can become an engineer, pursue other, an, a, a, a different profession, but the bottom line is that you remain a lawyer. Mm. An advocate is a person who has been co- who has qualified. Eh? In Kenya, we have a legal uh, framework, the Advocates Act, which provides for the manner of qualification of an advocate. Eh? Mm-hmm. So once you are you are admitted into the role, you will sign a role of advocates mm. uh, before the Chief Justice. Then you are given a practicing certificate number. So then that qualifies you to be an advocate and every year you must renew that uh, uh, certificate uh, for you to continue to practice eh? mm. because you can you can be an advocate and inactive mm. that means you can't take up cases you mm. can't um, uh, represent anyone you can't mm. act in a transaction eh? okay. so the law society of kenya maintains a database eh, where you can be able to search and check that peter wanyama is active mm-hmm. he's an advocate but active mm. you can check that so and so is an advocate but not active Mm. That means he's unable to take up cases. But he's still an advocate. Yeah, he's still an advocate. Because he was admitted to the bar. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. yeah. So there are procedures for him then to come back mm. into the profession. Eh? Mm-hmm. If, for example, you're an advocate and you go abroad for six years to do your master's and PhD, mm. when you come back, you then apply for you to uh, to be... Uh, to, to, to be made active, mm. uh, you apply to the Law Society of Kenya, the council considers your request, mm. and then you uh, made active after you've paid the back fees. Okay, okay. Yeah. Indu, before you come in. <laughs> Can you be an active member on the role of advocates, but you're not practicing? Yes, 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 yes. yes. I can, I can. So you can, can just apply, but you just decide. Yes, so I can be active. Mm. Uh, for, for example, now I'm active, but I can take a six months uh, break to go to uh, for holiday abroad, but I'm still active. Provi- the, 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 the issue is that you must maintain your uh, active status within that year. Mm. So, so that for this is, year, I'm active. Yeah. For next year, I have to apply in December to be made active for next year. What is being active? Does being active only mean that you've gone to court? No, being active means you have paid your PC Checking fees, practice certificate fees, mm. and uh, you are now recognized under the provisions of the Advocates Act to qualify as an advocate to represent people in court. Eh? Mm. Remember, let me just mention something here, and uh, it explains why the, uh, Atuli is very bitter. Mm. Atuli, uh, who is the Secretary General of Kenya Plantation Workers Union, hired an advocate who did not have a PC, not active. Mm. And uh, the matter went to court. We have the citation. Mm. Uh, and then the court struck out the pleadings. You know, it's a very serious offense. Eh? Mm. If, you, if, if, if you file pleadings, then you, uh, yet you don't have a PC. So the court struck out uh, the pleadings filed by Kenya Plantation Workers Union, which we are, uh, we are told is the Secretary General. And uh, that explains his bitterness against the legal profession. Oh, yeah, I can imagine condi- why it would. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then how is it possible that if you do not have an active status that you can then go and uh, apply for proceedings in a court of law and uh, no one is any wiser that that has happened? Is very Because we have several cases today of individuals complaining about cases that have been taken up by an advocate mm. who is not active and taken money from them in several cases and things have not been done and they get the short end of the stick. Is it something that ought to be checked when, for example, because now, I, I, from what I understand, mm. court cases are now all digital. And I assume that when you're putting in this information mm. that it would ask you for, as an advocate, your PC your number. PC number yeah, yeah, yeah. And the system should then be able to tell offhand whether you are active or not. Mm. How then do we have that such cases still are able to be logged and the individual who's handling your case as an advocate is not active? How would that happen? Mm, yeah, 
you know, you know, you know, you know the, we, we live in a society where crime can happen. Eh? Majority mm. of the members of the legal profession, the one who practice law, uh, it's very easy for you to check uh, their, 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 their active status by mm. simply going to the Law Society of Kenya website okay. and checking it out. Eh? Uh, of, of course, in terms of improvements, we might need to do more. Uh, by, for example, you know, we are in the digi digital era. Yes. If we have a new SSD code which you can click, uh, you dial, then you get the number of an advocate. Eh? Yeah. So that uh, uh, is one of the improvements which we need. We really need to push eh, at the Law Society of Kenya. But the, there are criminals outside there who masquerade. They are actually criminals. Eh? Mm. They masquerade as legal practitioners. Eh? They are not admitted to the bar. Some of them don't have LLB degree like Mr. Brian Mwenda. He doesn't have an LLB degree, but he masquerades as an advocate. Eh? Uh, so that is something which we need to look at it broadly uh, from a societal perspective. In terms of one, sensitization. Eh? We need to tell members of the public that for you to hire an advocate, that advocate is required to be active with the Law Society of Kenya, and they must show you a practice certificate for that particular year. Mm. Yeah, It's such a requirement. You can't file a case in court without indicating you are PC. Uh, in fact, Brad Mwendo was discovered eh, by an advocate yeah. when he, he, he attempted to file pleadings in court. Eh? And then a diligent advocate noticed the pleadings and said, but this, the, the, the pleadings look weird. Mm -hmm. uh, let me confirm with the Law Society of Kenya. That's how he was discovered. But all along, he's been going around eh, mm. telling people he's an advocate. He moves. Actually, he, he can come to a, 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 a forum where advocates uh, are doing their work. And uh, he engages. And then he yes. engages and with he them. sounds <laughs> learned. Absolutely. <laughs> no, he doesn't sound learned. And he, come okay, on. I, I must ask a question. Yeah. 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 Before, and maybe um, Manuel, you can jump in here. Before this advocate found these proceedings to be a bit off color, had he not presented himself in court, and I think that's still related to my previous question, mm. that who does the due diligence? Let's say somehow you, you job the system mm. and you're able to put in pleadings or proceedings, nobody mm. noticed, whatever, mm. that your case is. Because you said the system can take a little bit of tweaking, right? Mm. So you're able to get through that. In a court of law, before a magistrate or a judge, is there any kind of due diligence that happens when they're checking that these two individuals who are arguing cases before them have actually met the threshold for that particular proceeding in terms of their job? Is there anything like that? Or does the magistrate or judge just assume that the people who are sitting before him or her on that day should be in there? No, I think the first thing that uh, the Law Society has done is to create the website. And I think it's important for the public to also understand that before you instruct an advocate first, because before an advocate actually accesses a courtroom, mm -hmm. they must receive instructions. We don't go to court to sit there. We, we, we go to court to prosecute cases. Mm -hmm. And so you will not expect uh, anybody seated in court as an advocate you know, without an, an address in court without instructions from mm -hmm. a client. Mm -hmm. So once you're instructed you prepare those pleadings. If you look at the pleadings that uh, Brian, uh, Brian filed in court, it's obvious any judicial officer who looks at those documents will, number one, want to know what is P the P105 of this individual. And I think uh, the judiciary has taken serious steps in actually fight, uh, ensuring that the people who appear before them are advocates. Because it's a, it's a click of a, a button and checking out, asking an advocate, what is your P105? For the record, my P105 is 14, 535, stock 18. But Manu, are you, are you asked that every time you get into court? You are, you are not. Uh, someone like uh, Mr. Peter Onyama, who's a senior, if he appears in court, obviously people obviously know. know okay. You know, we know Peter Onyama. A judge but who's been a judge on that bench will most, see. No, okay. You know, we know Peter Onyama. A judge but who's been a judge on that bench will most, see. Uh, most you have appeared before me before. Yes, yes. so they yes. would yes. know. And that, be. And that alone would be an approval. Uh, okay. But again, but we don't use that. We don't use that. It doesn't qualify you. You must maintain an active status status and and for me i think uh, most most judicial officers have uh, that tendency especially if you appear before the superior courts from the high court court of appeal supreme court they have a way of actually finding out before they appear before if you if what you have practiced before the court That's of the, appeal the question is Manu. if you have appeared before the court of appeal uh. you will find that you, before the court starts they'll give you a, a document mm. to fill in your name mm. and your details mm -hmm. before you address the court okay. the reason why they do that is so that they can ascertain that the individuals appearing before them mm -hmm. are actually advocates and are active members Pause. of the law side. Okay. So what is that process? So what that happens? So, so you have filled so out the form, 
you've given it to the court clerk. Yes. Uh-huh. What happens The next? process is very simple. You realize the judicial officers, all of them are advocates mm-hmm. first before yes. they, they actually become judges and yes. magistrates. And uh, it's, 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 it's very easy for them to ascertain from the advocate's uh, website that an individual is first an advocate and then second an active member, active as, as a senior said, you have to take a practicing certificate mm-hmm. every year. You pay to the Law Society of Kenya, which money goes to actually the CRJ for pu- in the judiciary for purposes of a license. I understand. That I have licensed you yeah. to practice. So they have two options, mm. either to check you online, yes. see whether your status is active. The second option is actually to call the Law Society. Okay. There is a toll number, and I believe it's mm. still uh, available, to call and ascertain the status of an individual. I understand that, and that's yes. fantastic. But the question is, do they? And why and I, I ask that, yes. because it looks like we're splitting here, but I think it is critically important here yes. because of what we're talking about, because of the hundreds of millions that are lost through court cases, through individuals. And I can bet you this Brian gentleman is not the only one who's done it's it true. or who is aspiring to do it. And that's why I'm saying, yes, we know those processes exist for these things, but do they actually happen? And why I'm asking that is there's a lot of um, conspiracy going around as to whether he tried cases, whether he tried argued cases in court, whether it was the first or the 26th time that he did it. Mm. If it was the 26th time that he did it, then there's a problem. And I think that ought to be addressed. Did it actually happen? And and I think that is why it's important Mm. to also separate these two institutions. We are licensed to practice as advocates. Uh, in courts and even out of courts. Uh, we, we have advocates who practice as conveyances. Mm. The judiciary has an obligation and the law society has an obligation too. The law society is an independent entity of members. The judiciary is a public office. Sure. And judicial officers have a duty to fast because we have what we call taking quorum. You have to take Di, uh, you have to take quorum. You remember, before what, you appear before what, a judge, you mean? must you must actually come on, roll call, ta- come on, yeah, yeah, say roll call, yeah. state your name and uh, who you are appearing for, mm. so that the court can take that record. You don't Be- state your registration number. You don't re- state, and I think we are heading there because I think it's more important now that actually every advocate who appears must actually state the registration number. But I understand why sometimes you will find uh, a judge has a cost list of close to 40 matters. Mm. It will be very difficult to take a quorum for in terms of P105s. But again, they take the names. So the indolence is on the part of the judicial officers mm-hmm. to first of all ascertain that the individuals who appear before them. And I think most, most, most uh, clients out here, the public should know that that if you have an advocate who's, who's not, uh, uh, who has no license or mm. who's not an advocate in the first place, who appears before uh, a court of law, mm. those proceedings, because most of the matters that we defend in court involve millions and millions of shillings. Yes. So if it's discovered at any stage that you actually purported to s- file those documents, uh, uh, conduct pr- uh, proceedings without uh, being an advocate of the High Court of Kenya and having a PC, they are struck out. Mm. And you will waste your money. The will case go is struck out. The entire the pleadings, out, yeah. Yeah. the case is struck out. Yeah. And let me just intervene also something to just beef up what he's saying. Eh? You know, cases are now done online. Eh? Va- we, yep. we, we appear in court virtually. Yeah. Mm. So they are dangerous for masqueraders to to purport to appear. Yeah. So what happens is that uh, there's an e-filing system uh, where you have to file your case virtually. Mm. The judiciary doesn't accept the, 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 the physical copies of documents. Eh? Uh, so you, have, uh, you, as an advocate, you must have a profile under the judicial uh, if the, the judiciary's e-filing system. Mm-hmm. So that is important for you to read out. If, if you've got an advocate's office, eh, and then he's telling you that I'm going to file a document uh, in court, eh, yet the courts don't accept uh, uh, physical documents. So mm-hmm. physical no, that advocate, documents yeah, are no not longer. accepted. Yes, yes, you file them virtually. For and all then, cases. For all cases. Yes, yes. And, yes. Then, uh, and then when uh, you appear in court as an advocate, eh, because you must have a Microsoft account, eh, for you to appear in court as an advocate virtually. Mm. And for you to appear in court, then you must put on your video uh, for mm. verification. Then as a rule also, you must sign in under your own personal account. Eh? Mm. Okay. So if you go to an advocate's uh, office and then he's basic, one, he doesn't have a computer, then he's telling you he's, attend- he's attending court. Eh? He's virtual. Uh, two, he's operating in a shady office. Eh? Mm. Three, he's 
it's an advocate who is as in you know you know some of these things are perception eh? yeah you go to a quack's office you will quickly identify a quack sure uh by looking at that person Boy. so for, <laughs> for, 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 for the law society of kenya let me just explain Senior for the law society of kenya what <laughs> we need eh? they put yes. up a show what we need is active uh, public sensitization because let me tell you something and this might really shock you you know there are persons who will not appear in court yeah. maybe they are they, they are quacks and their work is to uh, sign uh, sell agreements eh? yeah. so you you are a member of the public you have 1 million shillings you want to buy a plot and then uh, you go to an advocate's uh, office advocates in court and commission yeah you don't votes. ask anyone you have 1 million shillings you don't even bother to call the LSK mm. yeah. and then you go to his office you give him the 1 million and then uh, you say that he's acting for you in a transaction he signs and stamps yeah he signs and stamps with using a fake stamp mm. and then you you don't make the verification then you end up losing your money so uh, the issue is that these folks are criminals eh? and uh, what L- the LSK has been doing is that uh, we have a robust uh, Uh, process which is ongoing eh? to look for quacks eh? mm. there are so many of them outside they are quacks not advocates they sell as advocates but they are quacks they are stealing from the public eh? mm-hmm. and at the end of the day it creates a perception that uh, uh, lawyers are thieves yet yeah. lawyers are no thieves Probably. so the issue is that we need to weed out this case if you go to mavoko here just go to mavoko mm. uh, chances are you might find a quack eh? practicing in conversing uh, accepting money from members of the public so what lsk does is is, is that we have a compliance department eh? both at the national office and at the branch level mm. where we move and uh, arrest this people hand, hand hand them over to the police and then they are charged in court the problem is that if, sometimes you charge them here then they resurface in another place eh? so we need a much more robust engagement on this issue to protect the public from losses eh? because there are many quacks there are many thieves you can't weed out society uh, okay, for, yeah. uh, from these individuals so what we need to tell members of the public is that really for you to uh, deal with an advocate please consult the law society of kenya if you see uh, one or two things uh, which are not right eh? Mm. Yeah. Just consult the lawyer case. is a lawyer. Yeah. So basically yeah. I hear what you're saying and there's a lot of work that needs to be done creating awareness to the public and making it very 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 easy for somebody to basically just verify this is a lawyer who is current in their status. Okay? An advocate who is current they have a compliance certificate and I can tell just by doing this and the other in a system that does not have this person involved. Yes, yes. This is one. But then there's also the society itself mm. and the other arms of government. If, for example, it's a land office, if wherever you have these um, lawyers or advocates coming in to act on behalf of their clients, maybe something needs to be instituted so that they can also help. Absolutely. The Absolutely. Innocent members of the public. Let's continue that conversation. We are talking about masqueraders, fake Uh, impersonators and all in the legal profession how can you tell a lawyer is a lawyer first of all look at their suit if it's a striped suit they are close to that <laughs> if they're wearing two watches they're closer to that if they're wearing a one big watch it's close to that if they're and driving <laughs> and if that watch is gold but you are now confirmed <laughs> without a doubt <laughs> if they're speaking big english close but you must If, even after you done all those things you must check but the chip is expensive <laughs> <PC>. <laughs> chip is expensive chip you is. will find someone spending 200,000 shillings to buy a plot and they never never bother to confirm with a lawyer yeah. a qualified lawyer and yeah. they end up losing the money go to nakuru yeah. many people have done uh, have they go to they they buy they, they buy multi million shillings property yeah. using non lawyers eh? mm. And then uh, or persons who style themselves as lawyers and you end up losing millions of shillings in terms of property. Look at what is happening in Athriba now in terms yeah. of demolition. Yes. What is happening there? You will find someone without going through a, a, a lawyer or maybe advised by a quick they bought that property without mm. you do, doing a due diligence. And you, and, you, and, you, and you can see the pain they are going through. You have invested 20 million in a house which mm. goes down because you never bought that to to, uh, to invest 100,000 shillings with a qualified lawyer to check for you the status of that. No, you did bother. You asked your friend who has also bought in neighboring plot uko na wakili ya wakili gani to me the same wakili same wakili just come for you yeah some of them are not genuine lawyers okay yeah. let's continue the conversation shortly half past nine. <laughs> this is the situation room the only way to start your day It's critical that people pay taxes. But then taxation has to have a limit. When you start overtaxing people beyond certain limit, then this is now we call robbery with violence. 
We are all struggling, but we don't show. If you're not doing well, shame on you. But you have to say, I'm broke and I'm struggling. <laughs> we are not okay until everybody is it's okay. okay. We are pretending to have political parties. Why don't we just be honest? And we say, these are the Luyas, these are the Kambas, these are the Kikuyus, and we are find ourselves in Kenya. You know, with, with politics and leadership, no matter what you do, mm. there will always be a complaint. <laughs> there will always be the assumption that you're either stealing or you're not doing things right. As a leader, don't fear. If you know you're doing the right thing, you've thought about it, you've got an expert advice, do it, then understand later. This country, we don't need prayers. Prayers mm. is between you and God. Good governance and thinkers who care about the country and not their stomach. That's what we need. The Situation Room. Kenya's biggest conversation. All right, cloudy conditions, what we're still looking at in Nairobi this morning. It's 18 degrees and we'll see highs of 26. Looking into a cloudy Nakuru, highs of 24 and lows of 15. And at 19, it's cloudy in Yeri with highs of 24, lows of 14. 14 will also be the low in a mostly cloudy Eldoret, currently at 19. It's partly sunny at 29 in Mombasa, highs of 32 and we'll see highs of 31 in a partly sunny Malindi at 30. It's 24 and mostly cloudy in Kisumu, highs of 29 and we'll see highs of 27. In a mostly cloudy Kakamega, 22 and cloudy in Kampala with highs of 26 and 32 will be the high in a partly sunny Dar es Salaam at 30. Severe thunderstorms still overhead in Johannesburg with highs of 19 and lows of 10. Mostly cloudy at 25 in Lagos and 24 and sunny in Kinshasa. Monday afternoon is sunny at 21 in Beijing and at 4 degrees temperatures dropping in Western Europe, 4 in Paris and four in London. It's 10 degrees and clear in New York Sunday night. Coming into Monday, highs of 16 and lows of 9. All right, looking much better on the thicker superhighway, but just over that drift at Survey, we'll see some traffic bumper to bumper after your service lanes option, um, still going into the city. Also reducing significantly on Kiambu Road, but then coming off of United Nations Avenue through to Limuru Road and into Mathaiga, out into the city still, we'll see some bumper to bumper traffic. Uhuru High will take the most of it at all your junctions, Lusaka, Bunyala, and then at Haile Selassie, that will still continue for some time. Let's keep an eye on things through the morning. Talk to us. Spice FM KE on X. Are you ready? Okay. Spice FM. Mature, intelligent talk every morning. Spice up yourself. Mornings done right. All right, 94.4 Spice FM. The High Court, Peter Wanyama and Manoa Hosea. Manoa is also the founding chair of the Young Bar Association. We are talking about identifying masqueraders before you engage them to be your advocates and representing you in court. Somebody is asking a question. Okoiti Okia Umtata, is he an advocate? Yet we see him in court. In fact, even to the highest court in the land, the Supreme Court. Yeah, yeah maybe Ma 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 Manoa can take that. Mm. Uh, okay, uh, Koiti Umtata is a public interest litigation uh, individual. Mm -hmm. I think uh, one of the things that I, the public ne needs to understand is that uh, any of us can institute proceedings before our courts, but not all proceedings uh, that that uh, that uh, any any other person can be able to institute. Mm -hmm. Okay, Umtata specializes on matters public interest matters that touch on bread and butter. And I think uh, uh, that is the reason why he has been allowed to practice. And if, you, if you've uh, bothered to check, you'll find that uh, Okia files petitions. And uh, whereas an advocate who's admitted uh, and practicing law files petitions too, they also file what we call plaints mm. and different uh, documents, of course, in, in, in a court of law. But Okia cannot file to represent you on a commercial matter. Mm. 
Okay. He can only file a petition before the High Court. And the Constitution of Kenya 2010 gives the public the leverage to approach the High Court, mm. especially on public interest matters. Mm. Okia cannot practice in the magistrate's courts because they don't interpret the Constitution. Okay. He only files matters that actually uh, uh, seek to interpret the Constitution. So for, 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 for that, the Constitution allows them to do that, mm. uh, from the High Court to, to the Court of Appeal to the Supreme Court on matters that are public interest in nature. Mm. and that touch on a public interest question mm. and, and that, that does not involve uh, uh, receiving so I don't think he receives instructions from anyone to file those matters. What qualifies as public interest? What qualifies as public interest? Uh, I will give an example of uh, decisions that have been made by the president uh, through executive order, for instance. You remember during the, the former regime, the law society was in court uh, challenging executive orders to transfer judicial functions from uh, the judiciary to ministries. Mm. There was the Kenya Meat uh, Commission matter transferring of the, the Kenya Meat Commission. Issue. The forest. There are so many questions mm. of law that qualify as public interest in nature, as opposed to commercial in nature, where there is a th th there is someone who needs to actually uh, gain from a transaction going wrong. For instance, a contract. Mm. Okia cannot actually go to court and challenge. Uh, uh, contractual uh, issues against, uh, of, of course, with, between parties or Kenyans. So th th that is the difference as, uh, uh, so be between a I, public interest. Do I, do I hear you to be saying that matters that lean very heavily towards what you call public good, yes, but are not necessarily commercial in nature or yes. criminal or anything else, yes, mm. that alone specifically, yes, which therefore means that it's something that revolves around the interpretation of the constitution on yes. that same matter. Yes. Mm. That's it. Yes. Yeah, actually, actually what happens yeah. Eh, yeah. is that, uh, you know, there's a document known as the constitution of Kenya. Mm. <laughs> ah, okay, that yeah. one. <laughs> so the constitution of Kenya mm. contains uh, what, uh, what lawyers and what the constitution itself calls. In one of the clips which is there online, eh, he says, I appear for so and so. You know, that's a very, very serious issue. That's why the DPP the other day ordered the Inspector General to, in, to investigate because it's a crime for you to purport to appear, yet you are not a qualified advocate. I was going to ask what kind of offence are we looking at Yeah, here? it's a criminal offence. When, okay, when this happens, so that's one part of it. Yeah. But then yeah. there's the other side of it where, again, the loss, um, the commercial loss, the resource loss that could happen as a result of somebody then yeah, uh, yeah. posing as somebody else. So what kind of offences are we looking at here? There are about f actually five offences that uh, uh, this brand is being investigated by the by the National Police Service. Eh? Uh, one is identity theft. Eh? Uh, you cannot purport to be someone. Uh, then you go online, then you take that person's identity. There's a real Brian who works at the state law office, who Brian uh, stole his identity. That's a major criminal offense. Mm -hmm. Number two, under the Advocates Act, you cannot appear, uh, purport to appear as an advocate eh? without having been qualified. Eh? So that's another offense which the Advocates Act creates. Okay. Uh, and then under the penal code, even the, the, the documents he prepared, eh? At, uttering a false document. Eh? Okay. To prepare a document, false yes, yes, yes. Yeah. You prepare a false document, then you utter it to a judicial officer, purporting that to be a genuine document. That's a, a crime he has committed. Uh, so Brian is in trouble. Let him uh, surrender. Let Sonko surrender him to the DCI as soon as possible so that he records a statement for purpose of prosecution. Because at the Law Society of Kenya level, advocates, we are really concerned about, uh, you know, he, he even comes out and uh, does a Twitter post eh, mocking us. Eh? We can't allow that. Eh? The, the position is that, yeah, we can't allow him mocking well, us. The position right. is that he's not an advocate. He's committed a criminal offense. Let him surrender himself to DCI as soon as possible so that he can be investigated through a due process, let him be taken to court, and then uh, he will plead, and then uh, the state will prove charges against him. Because where he is, eh, it is really very serious for you to act as an advocate, eh, yet you are not qualified. Eh? Can we clear up some cloudy issues here? Yeah. Um, you talk about the fact that he then did appear in court a couple of times, and uh, then the weight that it bore on that case, I think, is very important. And if you're going to ask yourself, then what were the outcomes of those particular cases where this identity theft took place, where purporting to obtain something in the presence of a judicial officer, etc., etc., what weight does it bear on those cases? Did it bear on those cases? Yeah, let me clarify something first. Yeah. Huh? Brian, contrary to, be, to, to the misinformation on Twitter, Brian has not won a single case. Okay. 
Yeah, winning a case is a process. Eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think this is just by t- some Twitter folks eh? mm-hmm. who just jump on it as, as a salacious story. Then they propagate, and then it picked it's picked up by the by, by the mainstream. Brian has not won a single yes. case okay. in court. All right. But we we confirm that he has appeared mm-hmm. or purported to appear in some cases. Eh? Okay. What happens is that if you if you file a pleading and you are not qualified. Eh? And uh, that pleading is in a case. Mm-hmm. So the court has an obligation then to strike out those pleadings from the file. Okay. And uh, if you are a party then who uh, hired uh, Brian, mm-hmm. who is not a qualified, then you must go to the drawing board and then hire a proper lawyer because and everything that you filed, yes, yes, everything that you filed in court will be struck will be, will be struck out. out. Okay. Uh, the proceedings where he appeared, and if, if, if I am uh, for the DPP, and he appeared in a criminal case. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will apply to strike out uh, those proceedings because they are nullity. You cannot have uh, an ad- a person who is not qualified purporting to uh, to represent uh, an, 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 an accused person mm. or, or even to appear on record. So everything that he said eh, and it was recorded, it's then struck out from the record of the court. Eh? Mm. So th- those are the consequences for you appearing in court as a masquerader. Uh, what happens to the person whom they were representing? I don't think whether this gentleman was representing anyone. I think, uh, and and and, so and if, you, if, 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 if you if you if you look at the video that is circulating, mm. yeah. he appeared in a, in Mine and Jenga's uh, case, case yeah. in court. Mm. Mm. He just showed up, and I think uh, there is one of our, our, our colleague in the DPP who actually uh, had a conversation with him initially. Mm. And obviously, you can't stop uh, people from coming court. Some of the, we have trainee lawyers who are in doing internships and all that. So you will assume that probably these are students. Mm-hmm. But when you take your feet and stand up and, uh, and start addressing court, he mm-hmm. said, I'm on record. Yes. But he never mentioned, I'm on record for, for who? Mm-hmm. Because you are on, on record? record for someone and you have to have written instructions. Actually, mm-hmm. good practice is that actually a client has to give you written instructions. Written instructions, yes. So that in you this have particular come on case, yes. was he on record? He was he, he entered on record because you see what we refer as on record is that uh, if the judge starts writing, he will ask That's your names mm. Mm. and you will mention your names yes. and you will say I'm so and so I'm on record for so and so. Yes, I think from the video and out of that euphoria, the gentleman stood up and said I'm equally on record mm. because if you realize some of these cases have quite a number of lawyers mm. and uh, some seniors come with their junior uh, colleagues in office mm. to participate in those proceedings as part of learning. Mm-hmm. So there is it's. Not difficult for the court to actually take that quorum mm. but again you purporting now to say that you you're, you're, you're on record and addressing court and then uh, later on it's discovered that actually you 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 are not an advocate in the first place or you, d- you didn't get instructions it, it is a professional offense mm. it's not even a professional because, because it's not even a professional in the first place is a quirk mm. and so therefore even the punishment that is given to advocates who are not active uh, in practice, is not given to him because it doesn't it doesn't qualify. It doesn't have the LLB degree and, and the complainant and is not diploma. Th- yeah. The complainant, remember, is the LSK. Yeah. Mm. So the offence the offence which he has committed is purporting to appear, and the complainant is the law society of Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is the regulator of the profession. The regulator yes. of the profession. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so for, contrary <laughs> to the public <laughs> opinion, as uh, <laughs> Peter <laughs> stated, <laughs> there is there is no, no 26 cases, and you see we have what we call in law citation. Yeah. Mm. What what citation? What what are these cases people are talking about? And I think you know most most of the uh, determinations made uh, by the judiciary mm-hmm. are posted at the Kenya Law Reports. Mm-hmm. And obviously, if you have determined a single case to finality, it takes a lot of time. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, hearing a case from zero to to the end to judgment, it's a process in itself. Mm-hmm. It can take up and, to a year actually. And the gentleman is indicates he stole an identity of someone who was admitted in 2022. It's not possible, How can you win practically possible, to win 26 a cases it's within impossible. a year. It's Ourselves impossible. We are established advocates, but you can't win 26 <laughs> cases in a year. It's impossible, yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> gentlemen, as, you, as you're saying, there are very many masqueraders mm. in very many of the professions in Kenya. Yeah. I mean, we had the case of somebody who performed surgeries a doctor, yeah. as a doctor mm. in a public hospital, yet he was not. And the policeman who was a we senior have somebody who is a senior police officer who has never been employed as a police officer, and so on and so forth. This is something that is rampant across. Mm. But in a profession such as yours, which is 
clearly regulated. Even the police, I mean, if, well, even the medical profession is clearly mm -hmm. regulated. There is a way you get licensed and this, mm -hmm. there are inspections and all. How does this happen? You know, it, sometimes it happens. Eh? Uh, you have uh, quacks who can fit in within the system. Eh? Mm -hmm. One, if you are lax. T then two, if when you, the system is weak. Yeah, when the system is weak. Eh? Mm. So definitely we will need to, a lot of society of Kenya, we might need to improve our systems. Eh? Mm. Might. We might need to improve our systems. Of our, actually, we must yes. improve our systems of an, on identification mm -hmm. to build confidence from members of the public and not necessarily be a law. You must confirm with the law society of Kenya. Mm. And now we have branches throughout the country. Mm. So just go to the, like in Akuru, there's a law society of Kenya office there. Uh, Mombasa, everywhere we have branches. So mm. members of the public should be able to uh, to know that please, de please. Mm -hmm. In terms of public mechanisms, and I think this is important because it goes beyond the law side, we have to look at the judiciary, let them play their part, that anybody who appears before them must actually identify. Mm -hmm. And I think nowadays there is a face, and even though that, that is the reason why uh, we, we are here, uh, someone actually stole someone's identity, mm. I, I think that is really the much the law society could have done at the moment to put a face and a P105 into the person mm. so that it's very easy for a judicial officer to actually fact check. It's a simple uh, mm. process mm. to ascertain that the people appearing before me are actually advocates. In terms of transactions and contract mm. writing, these are uh, things that are done in offices. Yep. But the consequences come later when there's a dispute as to that. For mm. instance, the purchase mm. of land. Mm. If you look at uh, three and the demolitions, you will you will you, you will go even if you go back you will find out that the advocate probably who drafted the documents was not a, a, a professional because mm. as a professional you must do due diligence and mm. one of the due diligence is to find out whether this is actually public land that you are purchasing yeah. those are basic uh, uh, things and I think as uh, uh, Peter said the public assumes that any person as long as a number has been shared to me, mm. is, a, is, a, is a lawyer. You mm. assume they are lawyers. You give them assignments, which assignments, obviously, will have an effect later on. Mm. If it was an advocate who committed that offense, and I can tell you uh, right now, that offense of actually overseeing a transaction which was on public land, mm. the Law Society of Kenya alone, that advocate is liable individually mm -hmm. for committing arrested, the offense. Yeah. He did not do due diligence mm -hmm. to actually uh, advise their clients accordingly mm -hmm. that this is public land. Mm -hmm. How often but, are but lawyers arrested over such offenses? Actually, they, yeah, they, yeah. they are arrested they are, they are over the time. Yeah. Yeah. There are serious matters yeah. before yeah. superior courts absolutely, where lawyers absolutely. were actually... Right. How many lawyers yeah. are arrested over such offenses? <laughs> Let me say something here. You know, what, what you raised was a fundamental issue. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between a quick committing a crime as a, a qualified, uh, purporting to be a qualified person, mm -hmm. and a real advocate, yeah. eh? a real advocate, committing, qualified, yeah. eh? committing a crime. Yes. Mm. Uh, so it happens. Sometimes there are cases where uh, uh, a qualified advocate handles clans' money, and, and then that advocate uh, misappropriates clans' money. So then what are the remedies for that particular client? I believe that's what you wanted to, uh, to, to, yes. to find out. Mm. So the remedy, as Mr. Mana has said, eh, is that uh, members of the public need to know that the legal profession in Kenya is regulated. No one, no one, even if you are an advocate, eh, you can get away with uh, committing a crime. Mm. What happens is that we have the Advocates Disciplinary uh, Tribunal, mm. where an advocate who has committed a crime Apart from being arrested by the police and charged in court, because you know you can be arrested. If you steal clans money, you'll be arrested for theft eh? mm. and taken to court. Then you are taken to jail mm -hmm. as an advocate. Eh? Mm -hmm. Apart from that, eh, then we, you also have the, 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 the advocate's disciplinary process. Eh? That process you are subjected through, you are prosecuted by law society of Kenya through that tribunal. And then when you are found guilty, depending on the level of offense, uh, the, 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 uh, some offenses may be minor, so you can, they can say we suspend you from the role of uh, uh, advocate for five years. Mm. Others are serious, like theft of funds. If you steal clans' money and you are an advocate, you will be a, a struck, struck out. out. Mm. Struck out. Stru struck off means you will never, never qualify as an advocate. Never. Never. Yeah. Never yeah. practice. Never again. practice again. And members of the public also need to check with the LSK because there's that database. If if you have been struck out. Mm. Uh, and LSK usually publishes this in the in the in the in the in the in the Kenya Gazette. So what we need to do is maybe tell members of the public in a more, in a more robust manner mm. that so and so is no longer an advocate. Don't trust him with Put uh, in the Gazette with with transactions. Yeah. Eh? So we need more public information. Yeah. We need to educate members of the public about the legal profession. The other mechanism is under the Advocates Complaints Commission. Mm -hmm. It's at the AG's office. Eh? If a lawyer has misappropriated your money and you have a complaint. 
uh, the legal sector is well regulated, it is checked. Just go to any attorney general's office in any part of the public. They will advise you that uh, if you have a complaint, go put it in writing. We'll forward it to the Advocates Complaints Commission. And uh, most of these complaints which are taken to the Advocates Complaints Commission and the Advocates Disciplinary Tribunal, if you are a lawyer, you usually attempt to settle them eh, because they are serious. Eh? Mm. It, it's taking away your bread. Eh? Mm. That means you must settle. You must settle that issue. If it's money, you must really refund. Eh? Mm. So the legal sector, members of the public need to know, is really regulated. It's a legal sector where there are no quacks. If the quacks are there, then they're operating outside the legal mechanism, which they are there. And we are saying members of the public need to help us. Eh? If an advocate has, uh, is not appearing as an advocate, eh? like you go to a place like Iruiru, or Kimilili, where I come from. Mm. You go you go in, that advocate, uh, first of all, is coming in the office drunk, smelling alcohol. Uh, he's not styling himself as an advocate. As I said, he has no computer. Mm. He's telling you that he's attending a case virtually, mm. yet he has no computer. Mm. And then you trust that advocate with one million shillings. Eh? That is definitely a quick. So members of the public need to know that uh, Law Society of Kenya, all they need to do is to go go to Bungoma Law Society of Kenya if you're in Kimilili, check with LSK in Bungoma, yeah. the branch. He's so and so an advocate I can trust. Then LSK, because they, 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 they're the advocates who are there, they'll quickly check and they'll confirm that that advocate is qualified and they will tell you, please, go and transact. Eh? But if you have misgivings and the person is a quick, please don't. Eh? Especially someone who has been arrested. Like now, Brian. Brian has, is definitely a quick. So let no member of the public engage with Brian. Eh? You because know, you will lose money. Again, there are very many cases. You've actually done well to say going to Ruiro, going to Kimilili. In many of these rural areas, people don't know who's a lawyer, who's not. You know, there's a certain office there, this person. Not all lawyers are advocates. Not all advocates are commissioners of oath mm. or notaries public. But you go in and this guy gives you the full suit of services because you're somewhere in Kimilili. You needed to find sign an, aff an affidavit to file so that you want to change your name. Mm -hmm. This guy has gone and done everything for you. Let a person. Then you realize later that you're dealing with a quack. With a quack, yeah. I, 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 I don't know what I'm asking here. Ignorance, ignorance is, uh, is not a defense. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. You have a duty. And you see the law site has devolved. We have branches across the country. Uh, to the extent that uh, if you're in uh, Kimilili... I have to stop you right there. Yes. Mm. We know all that. Mm. You also have the duty. You're the duty bearer. Yes. Mm. It is you and that's, and that's why I'm saying... Mm. It is you who should yes. tell us, beyond telling us an office exists... Yes. You should tell us the mechanisms you've set in place to inform people. And I, the same applies to doctors. The I same applies to I was, architects. I was coming there. That's actually the point I was making yes. before I finished. Yes. Yes. Was, before I finished. Yes. Yes. Was... We have very many people who call themselves doctors in these villages mm. who are maybe a guy who went to KMTC did pharmacy. Maybe. Or a guy, maybe. A guy who worked in a hospital as a nurse and then now he's come here and he's opened like a facility and he's doing all manner of and things. And he's wearing a lab coat. And he's wearing a lab coat. <laughs> and he charges money. Yes. It's upon the professional mm. yeah. regulators yes. to actually yes. go in there and do... I think it's a shared responsibility. If we say that it's upon the the profession 100% to actually ensure that they weed out these quacks, mm. it will be wrong. Because essentially, the, the, as, 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 a, as a citizen, you have a duty to also find out basics. Mm. And I said, uh, he asked a very good question. Mm. We, do we ensure that actually these people yes. within these villages know that there is a structured way of, 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 of actually you finding whether... You can demonstrate that. Yes, yes. Yeah. Then, yeah. And that honest with no longer public more information. Yes, yes, yes. And that's why I said yeah. that these branches that the law society have, and, and I think there are sessions that uh, every branch has. And clinics, the, yeah. Uh, clinics within those regions to sensitize the public as to who... Is a lawyer. Is, who is a lawyer. And again, there is a, the law society requires that you have a registered office. You cannot actually be a street lawyer because you are admitted. Uh, office is true. Yes, an office, the essence of an office. office. Yeah. <laughs> I think what you are saying, Eric, is that uh, going forward, uh, yeah. we need to do more in terms of public education. Uh, that's yes. the point. Yes. Public yes. education. We yes. need members of the public to engage more with Law Society of Kenya. Yes. yes. How do we engage? We need to uh, go on radio doing public forums. And more importantly, we do law clinics. Uh. Yes. Law and, clinics and is where... And lawyers should call out masqueraders among your profession because you, it's easier for you. Absolutely. That guy with the office there. Yeah, there's a lawyer who will come and say, who oh, in effect? Absolutely. Yes, yeah. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank Peter you. Wanyama and Manuel Hosea are advocates of the High Court of Kenya. They've been our guests. Thank you very much for tuning in to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. Tomorrow is Tuesday. We'll be here. Have a lovely day.
Good morning, this is Nizwam Dennis Aseto. REBC CEO Marjan Hussein Marjan has said they will not be able to conduct elections for Banisa member parliament owing to the delayed recruitment of new commissioners. Marjan, in response to a case filed by one Brian Mbugwa, has urged parliament to end the selection panel constituted to fill the vacancies to play their part to advance the continuation of a constitutional crisis. Crucial operations at the electoral agency came to a standstill following the retirement of former chairperson of Fulat Bukati and ex commissioners Abdi Galia and Boya Mbugwa in January after serving their six-year non-renewable term. The other commissioners were pushed out after a falling out over last year's presidential elections. The government has continued to distance itself from the continuous increase in the price of fuel in the country. The government has insisted that the increase in fuel products is as a result of OPEC countries' decision rather to lower the production of crude oil. Gladys Boss is the Deputy Speaker in the National Assembly. As we tell Kenyans about the cost I mean, the increase in fuel is also to explain to them that it is nothing, that it is not because of a failure by the government, a failure by the head of state, a failure by a cabinet, or, that, or insensitivity for that matter. It is because they are going on in the world that we have no control over. So yes, we are going through tough times. This as boss opined that a fuss should not be made out of the office space conflict between cabinet secretaries Moses Kuria and Musali Badavadi. This after the head of public service Felix Koske said that the now expanded prime